Sports, home to the World Series, Super Bowl 39, and in February, the 2005 Daytona 500. Fox Sports, celebrating 10 years of excellence. This is Talladega, the fastest track on the NASCAR circuit. Ernest Hemingway defined courage as grace under pressure. Today, courage, grace, and pressure will all be on display when we go racing as star drivers square off against those searching to make a name for themselves, including Dale Earnhardt Jr. as he battles his protege, Martin Truex Jr. We welcome you to Sweet Home Alabama and the Aaron's 312 on Fox, brought to you by Aaron's. Let Aaron's drive your dream home today. Big crowd on hand, 90,000 getting ready to go racing. Before we speed ahead, let's pause and head trackside for our opening ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the United States Marine Corps presents today's colors. Please remain standing as Dale Beaver from Motor Racing Outreach delivers today's invocation. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for gathering us under your great sky here today in Alabama. Thank you for the sunshine and for your love upon us. We ask your blessings upon the fans and the participants in these events today. For Christ's sake, amen. Now, let's welcome Holly Marie Mosley from Mobile, Alabama, as she sings our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we'd watch, was so gallant. the B-52 out of Barksdale Air Force Base. Give them all a round of applause. A strong show of patriotism as the drivers gear up and get ready to go. 312 miles, they'll be racing up to speeds of 190 miles per hour, and at that speed, the slightest mistake can be big trouble. And the drivers get ready to go. Restrictor Plate Racing Bush Style here at Talladega, our corporate headquarters, the Hollywood Hotel. We're parked in the infield as we continue to take the pre-race show to the races. We go to where the races are to try to bring you closer to the action. Part of a big weekend here on Fox, along with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers, and the Hollywood Hotel. It's where America gathers every week for racing. Uh, nice to see you. And you. Dale Earnhardt Jr. said this race makes him uh, a little bit nervous. It's even more dangerous than normal. What is he saying there? What he's trying to say right now, Chris, is the fact that because of this type of aero package that these cars are running today, you can take a rookie, somebody with limited experience, and he can run up there with these veterans and a lot of times that can get you in a lot of trouble. I mean, we've seen it here at Talladega time and time again. What happens is somebody makes a little mistake 
and end results can be catastrophic. Last year it was lap nine in this race. 18 cars were involved and it certainly affects uh, who finishes, uh, who survives. If it's not Junior, who's the guy to w watch today for the win? And man, Rod, you're telling me Michael Waltrip. All right, and in the championship points race, Michael Waltrip in the lead. Also, uh, keep an eye on Kyle Busch, driver of the five car. This is his first Busch Series race here. Kyle has said he's not a fan of restrictor plate racing. And also, Jason Keller, happy birthday to him, celebrated his 34th yesterday. Tracks like the Talladega, Daytona can be difficult on guys who don't have experience here. Some guy who does is with our Dick Bergman. Dick? Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the undisputed king of today's restrictor plate racing. At Daytona, he has won three times in the Bush Series, one here last spring as well. Junior, what kind of a race are our viewers going to see this afternoon? Uh, it's going to be pretty wild. Um, a lot of passing, a lot of, a lot of racing. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, just uh, hopefully we can all stay clean and not have any big crashes. Everybody have a safe day. Good luck today. Race safe. Matt Yoakum. Dick, rookie Clint Boyer on the pole in only his third NASCAR Bush Series start. He has been flooded with advice from Kevin Harvick and other teammates. Nervous or excited on the pole today, Clint? Oh, just excited. Uh, you know, happy for the guys back in the shop. Uh, you know, hats off to the fabrication shop and the engine shop. Uh, really did their homework. Uh, uh, Richard puts together a good super speedway package and uh, shows putting a rookie up front like this. He's got a friend, at least at the start, teammate Ron Hornaday Jr. alongside in the Blue Deuce. Mike? Thanks, Matt. Hi, everybody. Mike Choi, Larry McReynolds, and Daryl Waltrip with you. We've seen various different aerodynamic packages on these cars as NASCAR seeks to equalize the competition and have safe racing. Daryl, what about the package on these cars today? I really, I prefer this over what they have on the cup cars. I, I, I like the bigger restrictor plate. I like the bigger spoiler with the wicker bill on the back. I like the roof fin. Everything they've done here, I think, makes for better racing. One of the best races I saw here at Talladega was with this package on the Cup cars in 2001. Yeah, I talked to David Green earlier in the week. He's ran on all the different packages in the Bush Series, and he said what he likes about this versus the old restrictor plate, the smaller plate with this plate with more drag in the car, if you do have to roll out of the throttle, you can recover. In other words, a pack can run another pack down, and he said he likes the ability to do that. And all those aerodynamic, the fences across the front of the roof, the wicker bill at the back of the spoiler, helps the car punch a bigger hole in the wind so other cars can pull up and draft. Ask Joe Nemechek. He's won this race from the pole. He's also won it starting way out back in 35th position. You can win here from just about anywhere. Last second preparations. Drivers buckled in, window nets going up as we bring you trackside for the command. gentlemen please direct your attention once again to the start finish line as we welcome back atlanta falcons running back warwick dunn for the most famous words in motorsports <laughs> drivers crank it up <laughs> Warwick down to the Falcons, Atlanta, about 115 miles from this racetrack. He's a little guy who's made big. Warwick done on the NFL. How about a big guy trying to make good here? Let's check in with Jeannie Zalasko. Jeannie? Well, it is almost a guarantee that Michael Waltrip will step up to the plate. The restrictor plate, that is. A Talladega weekend, much needed for the Cup driver and for the Bush driver as well. He'll take it. He's been struggling, of course, on the Cup side. 2004 on the Bush side, a different story, guys. He won at Nashville, and now he's the points leader. Michael Waltrip was only supposed to be doing this part-time. Now they're starting to reevaluate. One, because of the struggle on the cup side and two boy if there's a championship within their grasp Michael wants to reach out and grab it well Jeannie on a weekend when most 18 year olds are more concerned about preparing for the prom Kyle Busch is set to run here in his next points race at Talladega and he comes here third in points one area of concern for Kyle Busch today his father will not be his spotter they have a new spotter Chris Osborne, who normally is with the 48 team in the cup side for teammate Jimmy Johnson. Chris Myers. All right, thanks, Steve. From an 18-year-old to C.W. Smith, who will be driving in the 67 car. He's a former Pennsylvania State Trooper. Also, two female drivers, Kim Crosby and Tina Gordon, racing in today's race. Glad to have you with us here on Fox. 
Hello, I'm Ken Butler. I'm president of Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership. Hi, I'm Allie. Hi, I'm Angela. And welcome to Talladega in the Aaron's 312, the fastest, longest race of the bush season. Now you wonder why we run 312 miles. Number one, you're always pre-approved. Number two, you're always guaranteed the lowest price. And number three, you can own your dream products in as little as 12 months. Welcome to Talladega. Sit back, relax, and have a great day. Well, we thank you for that. What's a soybean field, then a World War II airfield, now one of the hot tracks uh, on the circuit. Welcome back to the Aarons 312 on Fox, brought to you by Aarons. Let Aarons drive your dreams today. At Talladega Super Speedway, 40 miles from Birmingham, Alabama, just down the road from Atlanta, Georgia, and moments away from the start of uh, today's race. The starting lineup on the screen will be shown below. Clint Boyer on the pole shares the front row with teammate Ron Hornaday Jr. Also Robert Presley back in the 47 car for Mark Green, his father in the hospital. We certainly hope that he is doing well. No man, of course, uh, drives alone at Talladega. It's a team effort, so we sent Jeff Hammond alone down to our Ford cutaway car to explain. Jeff? Well, Chris, when it comes to Talladega or any racetrack on the circuit, you need the new safety uh, restraints as far as the headrest, the helmet, the head, the head and neck restraint. But more importantly, when you come to Talladega, you need to have a good set of mirrors so you can see the cars on your inside as well as on your outside because you can't move your head around a lot. But the guys you're going to really be dependent upon today will be the spotters who are upstairs looking down upon all these race cars as they race around this high bank racetrack. You've got to have a spotter who you can have confidence in because dicing in and out of traffic at better than 190 miles an hour, you have got to have somebody you can trust. And for more on this, what happens when you don't have the right person, Speedway Illustrated's Dick Bergman. Well, thanks, Jeff. The big topic of conversation in the garage this weekend among drivers and crews has been the big one, the big crash that sweeps up a dozen, two dozen, or more cars. Last year, the big one happened on lap nine. The year before, it happened on lap 15. But it can happen anytime, early in the race, middle of the race, tail end of the race. The drivers say they think it's going to happen today. Their wives, their friends, their fans, the drivers themselves hope it doesn't. Jeannie? Uh, how to avoid the big one? That is the million dollar question with several schools of thought, including these from guys who know the veterans. A bunch of drivers in the garage today were talking about, hey, let's get together, help each other work to the back of the pack, and then the madness can just unfold in front of us. Other drivers like Joe Nemechek said, wait a second, I prefer to step on the gas, get out in front, and leave all the drama in my dust. The conclusion, there is no answer. Hold your breath, Steve. And Jeannie, this race, one of the keys to the race, positioning. You have got to be a position at the end of the race to make a charge, and you can't do it by yourself. You have to be in position with a friend, a dancing partner, to be able to make a run to the checkered flag. If you don't, you'll be hung out to dry, Matt Yoakum. Steve, who you dance with on the racetrack may definitely dictate who you partner with when it comes time to hit pit road for service. Pulling a number of crew chiefs this morning in the garage area, the majority are on the two-stop plan, but already they're ready to go for a gamble, even call an audible on whether they go for the two, four, or no tires when it comes time to hit Perot. But it all dictates whether it's a no caution or a number of cautions. Mike? Thanks, Matt. The drivers do not grip the wheel tight in fear, but Daryl running this close at these speeds, why do they call this white knuckle racing? Well, you actually are you're squeezing it that hard here. I mean, you can't relax. And one of the things about this aero package, I like it, but the drivers kind of say it causes a problem for them, is the closing rate. When the cars are all bunched up in front of you and you've got that big spoiler on the back and that wicker bill on the top, it allows your car to really suck up in a hurry. And that's where you run into problems. Get somebody up here not going as good as you are, ram into the back of them, and we got trouble. There are the drivers doing all he can with his foot on the floor all the time. What about pit strategy? Well, I'm going to follow up on Matt Yoakum. What you do, you work this race backwards as a crew chief. It's 117 laps, 300 miles. If you can run about 50 laps on fuel, you work that backwards. And your goal is, once you get to within that window, and you can get fuel in that car, and these cars run the 22-gallon fuel cells versus the 13.5 in the cup cars, you get that car full of fuel, some decent tires at least on the right side, and then you're good to go. The best position to be, and we can talk about strategy, is out there leading this thing. Chris? Well, the uh, yellow line certainly uh, could figure. That's the out-of-bounds uh, line the drivers will have to be careful with. And we're getting ready for the green flag. Drivers representing 21 states from across the U.S., four from Alabama. That's the most, along with the Michigan. We'll be back in a moment.
Fox, glad to have you with us from Talladega Super Speedway. Be with us tomorrow at 1 Eastern, noon Central time for cup racing. Today, Bush racing and awaiting the big one. Whether it will happen or not, we'll keep an eye on it, Mike Joy. It's not inevitable. Mark Martin won here in 97 with only one caution flag. But it seems to happen so frequently here. Somebody tips somebody, a car gets sideways, and the whole field wads up behind them. Mike, you've raced in so many other racetracks where a little contact doesn't hurt anything. Here, a little contact creates situations like this. Now, a 737 takes off and lands at, what, 135, 140 miles an hour? Somewhere in that, 160 miles an hour, excuse me. We're running nearly 200 miles an hour. So these cars, NASCAR's done all they can to keep them on the ground, but, well, you see what happens. And you see most of these big ones, they happened up there in the very front part of the pack. And we talk about the importance of the spotter. There's nothing a spotter can do to talk you through that. 85 degrees, beautiful day here. There's your track temperature at 105, and just a little whiff of a breeze. And with running around here wide open, that track temperature has to make a substantial change to really make a difference in the handling of these cars. Remember, they run around here wide open, never lifting the throttle. The real breeze is generated by these race cars. As yeah, they go by at 190 or so. An incredible amount of turbulence comes off these cars right now. And there you see the pit road speed, 55 miles per hour. That can be a challenge when you come off that racetrack under green running 190 miles an hour. Three sets of tires under caution. We don't anticipate they'll even use that many. And if we do have a caution late in the race, four laps to go, we would get the red flag at lap 113 or less. Several cars are on pit road. Um, Brian Vickers among them. Or excuse me, Bobby Hamilton Jr. among them. David Johnny Green. Benson. David Green's back down there. I'm not sure what he's doing. There he goes. We'll mention again that uh, David's middle brother, Mark Green, qualified the 47. I want to say hello to Bob Presley and that whole family out in Asheville, North Carolina. Bob, a, a longtime star of NASCAR's late model sportsman series, which became the Bush series. His son, Robert, will climb in the car and race today. Bob suffered a stroke earlier this week, and we hope he's doing okay. Yeah, I raced against him back in the 70s. He's a tough competitor. Now, the irony of those cars that were on pit road, now you cannot stop and put fuel in your car to the green flag, but the irony of David Green, Bobby Hamilton Jr., Johnny Benson, that was exactly three of the teams that I know Jeannie Zelasco talked to this morning. You heard her in her pit story earlier that wanted to get to the back of the pack and actually put some distance in their self in the front of the field, get away from the eye of the storm a little bit. So you're saying they're not going to race their way to the rear. They have positioned themselves there on the pace line. It just just based on what we were told this morning and what Jeannie had found out, uh, it has all that look about it. Let's find out. Steve? Well, Mike, we just checked out in David Green's pits, and they were having radio problems. This is not a place where you don't want to have radio communication problems, but they say now the problem is fixed. Matt? Steve here in the 25 pit. Basically, Bobby Jr. came down pit road, and they nonchalantly looked over the tires and also keeping in mind their original game plan was to drop to the back anyway. So you, so you can kind of see that goes along with their game plan, Dick. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was just on the radio and thanked everybody for what he called the extra effort to get this car in the race. He said if they drop out of the first lap or win the race, it's all the same. It's about coming here to have fun. Thank you, everyone. Junior won in Daytona with number eight. He's relinquished that to Martin Truex, who's going to run the whole Bush Series with the number eight. So Junior's in 81 today. There's no question in my mind now that's exactly what Johnny Benson, David Green, Bobby Hamilton Jr., that's what they're doing. They're getting away from this field for a few laps in the beginning of the race. Yeah, that's a great strategy, but can't get too far back there. Even the three of you can, or they'll get away from you. But that's the good thing about this aero package, Darrell. You can pull back up a little better than the old package. Getting set to go racing for 312 miles at Talladega. Well, them belts tight one more time. Let's go. Boogity, 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 boys. Let's go racing. Now, with the carburetor restrictor plate, it will take these cars almost a complete lap to make it back around to be at full speed. Two cars slow getting up to speed. Donnie Neuenberger and that yellow car on the apron is Justin Ashburn. Right now we're seeing a lot of two by two. It will not be long as we're already seeing on the back stretch. You'll see them three wide, you'll see them four wide. Rookie Clint Boyer being pushed by rookie Martin Truex. That's Hornaday up top with Robbie Gordon, two veterans. And those yellow bumpers are the why is why some of those guys wanted to follow the back. These guys have very limited experience here, almost none. 
That 16 car is not going to make it around. He may turn in on the apron in turn two as we come around to complete lap one. Pretty much all Richard Childress Racing engines up there, one, two, three. Remember Robbie Gordon, even though he owns his own Bush Series team, Richard Childress builds the engine for him. We're single file through about the first seven or eight cars. Jason Leffler leading the group up top. Back at about 12th place. We're riding with Dale Earnhardt Jr. right there. He has a little bit of help from behind, but there looks like they're trying to get down to the bottom of the racetrack. 16, you see, did not turn in. He's crawling slowly toward the garage, but he's well down and below the other line off the racetrack official. And they'll wave the caution for Justin Ashburn. Racing stops, field is frozen. And everybody will reduce speed and come around to the line and complete lap two. First caution of the day, lap two at Talladega. The Aaron's 312 on Fox is brought to you by Aaron's. Let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. By Taco Bell, think outside the bun. By Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. And by Foom. And for this web MD safety report here at Talladega, Speedway Illustrated, Stick Burger. Dick. Thanks, Chris. Every driver in today's race is wearing a flame-proof uniform similar to this one. Point of this whole thing is not so much that the uniform doesn't catch fire, it's that the uniform prevents heat from transferring to the driver in the event of a fire. Most of the drivers use a two-layer uniform like this one with Nomex on the outside, Impactium on the inside. And it's good for about 25 seconds in a gas fire. That is my hand under there. So far, so good. I don't even feel anything on my hand. 25 seconds. Safety first. Chris? That's pretty good. I, I think Dick used that on his hair before. We can, because we care. For more information on how to keep your family safe and healthy, as well as a chance to win tickets to race next season in Daytona or Talladega, visit drive.webmd.com. And we'll be back here in Talladega in just a moment. Don't go away. First caution of the day, Justin Ashburn slow in the back straightaway. He did get, a, get back to pit road and has continued. But it allowed several teams to make pit stops under this caution. I didn't see any tire changing going on again. Anytime, especially if you're at the back of the pack, as most of these cars were, you see Tim Fita were there, Bobby Hamilton Jr., David Green, Johnny Benson, Jason Keller, a lot of the guys that, that Genie Zelasco talked to this morning that said, hey, we're going to sit back and ride for a while, but they get those tanks full of fuel every chance you get. Nah, they just came in. They still got a radio problem. You think? All five of them. They can't talk to each other. And I got some beachfront property just down the road I want to sell you. Green, 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 green. Passing only on the right until you go by the start finish line. And we're back to racing with Ron Hornaday, Ronnie Gordon, uh, Robbie Gordon, Clint Boyer, Martin Truex Jr., Mike Bliss, the front five. Single file restart this early in the race. No cars were a lap down. We mentioned in the beginning of the race with these restrictor plates under the carburetor, it takes about a lap to get up to full speed, even at a 2.66 mile track. Just, uh, I'm curious to see how those boys' strategy is going to work out falling back like that, because this pack gets broken up. You get two or three fast guys together in the front, they can put you in a jeopardy going to lap down if this thing stayed up under green very long. Saw Greg Biffle in the 60 car there. He pretty much did some serious bump drafting on Kenny Wallace. We're actually riding with Kenny right now, and Greg Biffle was one of the ones in happy hour practice yesterday that NASCAR said, hey, calm down just a little bit. Just tune it down just a hair. Here you see that bump draft. He's still all over the with you. Kenny Wallace, what that does is that shoots the car. You see how big a gap that put between the 60 and the 23? It shoots that car in front. It's like giving it an extra 50 horsepower. Fifth place for Wallace. He can bump him right to the front. But I don't want to be bumped when I'm in the corner, though, right? No, you can. it's a straight line thing. You start bumping around like that in the corner, you're going to wreck the guy. Here he comes. Just push, push. Now you got to back off a little bit, give him some room. He's in the turn here. He don't want to do it here, but you watch these two guys are coming right to the front. They're up to third. Because with the aero package we've talked about, even when Greg backs off in the corner in the 60 car, he's able to pull back on the straightaway as he's doing right here and bringing that line of cars behind him with him. 
Yeah, he got back a little far off turn four there. He's going to have to give him a pretty good shot here to get him back in the front. Can't quite get there this time, but he'll try to do it down the back. You know what amazes me, because we don't get the perception how rough this racetrack is. You can see these cars never start, stop moving around. It's a very rough racetrack. Now the high side's Jason Leffler. Try to climb up to around fifth. Way on the outside. That's Wallace in the middle of the yellow car. That's the left middle, not the right middle. It's a lot of middle there. And you're riding with Dale Jr. Greg Biffle just ahead. Casey Kane to the inside in the 38. Biffle has, Greg Biffle has come from 26th to 6th in just five green flag laps. Yeah, he had a good race car and happy hour practice. And as we watched Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 81, the Taco Bell car, he's going for five restrictor plate wins in a row here in Daytona. Jeff Hammond. Mike, another guy right now is on the move. Is that 99 car, Michael Waltrips. He took the outside right there with the double zero of Jason Leffler and really coming up through the pack right now very quickly. And Jeff, of course, he was very happy with his car. The Bush Series had two practices yesterday morning. Michael kept his car parked in the garage for the second practice. Now the drivers that stopped are running about eight seconds behind this lead pack, hopefully for them, out of harm's way. Uh, but they've not drifted back out of contention, so to speak. No, they're okay. They're only two or three tenths off of what these lead cars are running right now. So if they stick to their game plan, looks like they may be all right. Ron Hornaday, first time he's led in the Bush Series since Daytona. The AC Delco Chevy leads them around. Robbie Gordon has been right on his rear bumper the whole way so far. And, Darrell, all the different racetracks we go to, we talk about preferred line, but pretty much at Talladega, it could be the bottom, it could be the middle, it could be the top. It's who's got the best line of cars in them. Yeah, usually think inside or outside. That middle is a sucker hole most of the time. With this uh, package here, it's not quite as bad, but you get that middle and you don't know if you're going to go forward or backward. Kenny Wallace and Greg Biffle still trying to work the outside to get to... the rear bumper of Kenny Wallace. And believe it or not, Kenny Wallace is in there saying, come on, man, come on, push. Now, if the spotter for Greg Biffle is watching this, one thing they've got to make Greg aware of is you see him kind of dip the nose out in there right there. He's been tucked up behind this car for five laps. The water temperature will start to go up because there's not a lot of airflow going through that grill right now. That's what you call getting pushed right into the lead. And that's where Kenny Wallace is trying to go. Hornaday right. holds him off for the moment. Watch him down this back straightaway now. When Biffle can get up there, Actually, Biffle doesn't look like he's quite as fast as Kenny. Now they're going to, here we go, here we go, here we go. A little shove, little shove, and here we go, buddy. Look at that. That's working it to perfection right there. I mean, look at this pack of cars right here. This All is about the, the top clear by 20 half. cars right now, and it's less than a second and a half right there, that whole wad of cars. And it's all happening at over 190 miles per hour. More of the same tomorrow. 500 miles at Talladega. The Aaron's 499 here on Fox. Dick Bergeron. That is the first lap that Kenny Wallace has led, believe it or not, since April 2002. And where did he lead that lap? Right here at Talladega. I talked to him this morning in the driver's meeting. Wallace thinks he has a car that's good enough to win. His crew chief, Chris Rice, also thinks they have a car good enough to win. They've got a terrific weapon. It right now is on the point. Well, somehow that five car there, Kyle Busch, he, he was up in that pack and all of a sudden he started drifting back. Looked like he almost lost power and uh, now it looks like it's running right again. So like Mayo had to flip a switch. Yeah, these cars, most of them carry two ignition systems. If one went out, you flip a switch and they'll go to a backup system. But just to tell you about this place, we're watching Kenny Wallace in that 23 car lead. Remember, he started 24th and in 11 laps, he's leading this race. Proof the starting position here does not matter. Matt? Mike, just like Daytona, young Kyle Busch is experiencing an overheating problem. The water temperature has climbed to 240. If you recall back to Daytona in the Busch Series race, it was up over 260, and it blew the motor. He's trying to drop back to get some fresh air into that engine. Well, Darrell, you talk about the sucker hole. What the crew chief gets suckered into is running a lot of tape on the nose of these cars because it really helps the straightaway speed. But then sometimes I think it's much warmer today than it was yesterday morning when these cars were practicing. You need a little more airflow. You just never can simulate race conditions. 
You can go out there and run in a pack of cars, but you never get tucked in this tight this long, and the temperatures do go up. Look at the difference between the, the 23 car here, Kenny Wallace, and then go back and look at the grill on the 5. About twice as much tape on the 5. And right now, I'm sure Kenny Wallace, Chris Rice, the crew chief, wish we had a little more tape on the nose now if they're leading because it's getting plenty of airflow. Racing's all about compromise. You know, you got to give up something to get something. But that's one thing, Larry. You can't plan on leading here. No, Nobody sir. can. Not Never for long. can. Dell Earnhardt Jr. in that 81 car. He's bringing his teammate in the car that he owns, Martin Truex, in the 8 car. They're trying to move up there as he takes second position away from Greg Biffle in the 60. At 23 with Kenny Wallace on board. I tell you, that thing's pretty stout because he's worked his way right to the front. He's able to hold them off. And Robbie Gordon in the 55, he moves to the high side, hoping to get some help from Joe Nemechek back there in the 87 car. Kenny Wallace, who last led at Talladega two years ago, hauls them around the nation's fastest super speedway. New leader in the Aarons 312, Dale Earnhardt Jr. just drove around the outside of Kenny Wallace with help from Robbie Gordon to become this race's third different leader. Uh, Stacy Compton made a pit stop while we were under while we were away under the green flag changed tires and came back out gets a run on him right here through the trial when he's got robbie gordon Dale jr does right behind him in the 55 they just swing around the outside of kenny he's kind of a setting duck because he's got nobody behind him at this moment he needs his bump grafting partner back up there there wasn't a thing he could do about that we've talked to you about how starting position here does not matter aaron says do the math robert presley has gained 22 spots, Kenny Wallace 21. Since the wave of the green flag, Wallace and Biffle up there fighting for the lead. Rick Bergman. Well, Chris Rice, Kenny Wallace's crew chief, just came running down to the Earnhardt pits and almost begged these guys to stick with him, that the three of them would go to the front, stay to the front. Didn't work. The 81 went right on by him. True act. Or Earnhardt, right? That may be the one car here that needs no friends. Pretty much, once he gets in front, <laughs> it's a, like the chase is on. He might not want any friends, but a lot of people want to be his friend. That's right. <laughs> now, the race's first leader, Ron Hornaday, has slid back to 11th, Steve. Hey, look at here. Here comes Robbie Gordon on the outside, guys. And Mike, Ron Hornaday Jr. just said, woo, this thing is loose. He said the left front tire is doing all the work right now. Crew Chief Butch Hilton said, 10-4, we're going to work on your tire pressures when we make a stop. Yeah, that's one thing. You, you want to be neutral here. You don't want that thing to have any front end shove up off the corner, especially off turn two. But just remember, they're trying to run around here wide open, over 190 miles per hour. You don't want to be turning back to the right. No, you don't. And, and really, you do try to run wide open. But with this restrictor plate package here, you can feather the throttle a little bit. The other thing you can do is ride the brakes. Kind of keep the guy behind you at bay by just slowing the car down a little bit with the brakes. Robbie Gordon leads this big draft at the front. Let's go back and find the drivers, though, who made pit stops before they waved the green flag. There they are. Bobby Hamilton Jr. is 25th, matching his car number, nine seconds off the lead. Right behind him, all Bush Series regulars. Tony Raines, David Green, Jason Keller, Tim Fedewa, Casey Atwood. And talk about Tim Fedewa and Casey Atwood. Remember, as we ride with Jason Keller here in the 22 car, Fedewa and Atwood are teammates. They had good qualifying runs on Thursday. And after qualifying, the roof flaps, the crew chiefs actually had them propped up just ever so slightly with some spacers trying to strip air off the roof instead of going back to the rear spoiler. They disallowed their time. Both of them had to start at the rear of the field. A little bit of too creative engineering. Just a little bit. You know, the strategy that those guys are using, though, I've been surprised that more guys haven't done this, uh, particularly in the cup race. But I think the secret, Darrell, as we watch the leader right here now, Robbie Gordon in the 55 car pull that pack around, I think the secret, those guys, they have to stay in line back there. They can't start racing each other because when you do, you start losing time. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You get impatient. You know, all of a sudden they start saying, hey, the leaders are getting away from you. You start getting impatient. Up through the middle. Not a good thing. Lewis in the Advertise Here Chevrolet, still looking for a sponsor. And James Inch is the crew chief, you know, from the Cup Series of Johnny Benson's old crew chief. He's the crew chief on that car now. Paul Menard, rookie just ahead, rookie to the left is Martin Truex. Andy Petrie's car up there with Menard. 
you know, at some point, maybe we'll get a front shot of Ashton Lewis's car because as we were looking from the, the roof forward, you were seeing some tape flapping there. It's like maybe some tape has blown off someone else's car and it's hooked on the hood pin there. I don't think it was tape that was actually on the nose of his car. We talked about the importance of aerodynamics here, but in the draft, Larry, that won't hurt you, will it? Well, I think Greg Biffle showed that last yeah. year in the cup race. Yeah, it's when you get out there by yourself, it makes the huge difference or actually out there leading. This Rob car was beat to pieces. Robbie Gordon has now led four laps. Casey Kane has come to the front with him. Jason Leffler and Joe Nemechek, who's had such success in the Bush Series here, is in fourth place. Jeannie. Showing tremendous patience on and off the radio at times. The spotter, the crew chief, letting him know just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing the right thing. Help is on the way. He's been waiting for the draft. Promises that the four car that would get up there to help didn't really come to fruition. So he just had a visit from the 33 team. The crew came over. Looks like they're making a deal, maybe getting him some help, getting him moving a little bit better like he's planning on doing, making his way to the front. Junior comes alongside, drafting off the four of Mike Wallace. But I tell you, I, I, we've seen something here today that I haven't seen quite a while. Somebody actually pulled out and passed Dale Jr. on the outside. Robbie Gordon, and that's his own car, by the way, and Robbie Gordon's running a great race right now. All contenders there as Biffle pulls up on Dale Jr. Robbie Gordon, the leader, Casey Kane, Jr. in this number 81, Nemechek and Biffle. Among those who will hope to sort it out, over the 312 mile distance, 117 laps of Talladega. Robbie Gordon, who's now led eight laps, continues to haul Casey Kane, Jason Leffler, Joe Nemechek, and the car you're riding with, Dale Earnhardt Jr., around Talladega. Taco Bell trivia. Since uh, this was named the NASCAR Bush Series, what one driver? has started every Talladega Bush Series race. Not Mark Martin. I think it might, you mentioned him a while ago, maybe Joe Nemechek. Survey says, huh. Nemechek. You know, we saw about Casey Kane. Good job, Larry. <laughs> Thank you. I, I love it when you study the book. <laughs> Talk about Casey Kane up there running in second place. He's got a new crew chief this weekend. Paul Andrews, that was a crew chief over in DEI. So uh, a couple of guys that are making a good showing here today have got new crew chiefs. Speaking of good showings, Jason Leffler has hung out with the top five here all day. He's the third car on the inside row in that Haas Automation double zero. Steve Burns. Mike, Jason Leffler, another driver complaining of being on the loose side. His crew chief, Booty Barker, saying we're going to adjust with air pressure and wedge when we stop. Now, being loose in the turns, it doesn't really bother you that much. Where being loose really bothers you is through the tri-oval. You get a car on the outside of you through the tri-oval, and that'll almost suck the back end out from under you. You don't have the banking in the tri-oval that's got in the turns. And, and Daryl, just remember, with this package here, and I know these guys raced it at Daytona, even with that big spoiler back there with that return flange, that roof fin puts a lot of front down force in the car, which will tend to make one a little bit loose. Three wide, and look who's up high, making a name for himself, Johnny Sauter, bringing the Kleenex car all the way to the front on the outside, vying for second spot, Dick Bergman. Well, Sauter had to go up there, Mike, because he started to run hot after following Junior for all those laps. And indeed, they did communicate to Dale Earnhardt Jr. that Sauter couldn't stick with him because he has an overheating engine. And you know, one reason they may be overheating is because this is a different nose that they've been using to work with. This team has been running Pontiacs, and they've brought brand new Chevrolets here. They've been slowly but surely making the transition to the Chevrolets. Another guy that we want to keep an eye on, remember our pole sitter, Clint Boyer, in that 21 car. He didn't stay up at the front, but he's been hanging out right there about the top 10, right about 9th to about 12th. Now remember, this is only his third Bush Series start. He has never raced here, and Jeff Hammond, I think you had a conversation with him this morning. Yes, I did, Larry. I asked him, I said, uh, has Richard Childers and your crew chief been giving you kind of advice? And he said, yeah, they have. They said, he told me to be patient more than anything else. Let the race come to me. If there's a hole there, double check and make sure that hole is really there. Don't get in a hurry trying to work through this traffic. Try to get in line and be patient and you'll be successful. Dave really wants to finish this race and keep this car up in that owner's point. Jeff Fuller takes his car to the garage and out of today's race. Let's check with Matt Yoakum. 
Mike Limbor hasn't deviated from his pre-race game plan, and that was to hang on the bottom right on that yellow line. He told me that if 40 cars pass him, that's fine. He wants to stay on the bottom. Big learning process today. He ran the Daytona Arca race, ran top five most of the day until he was shuffled back to seventh. His spotter, Mike Dillon, keeps giving him advice lap after lap. In fact, he told him one big piece of advice. You keep pulling out too early, and that's why you're getting that big gap between yourself and the car in front. Each lap, a big learning. And Mike Dillon would know he's driven that car here for Richard Childress. Yeah, and, and I think what Boyer's doing is just get some that good experience. Trying to learn, figure out, got all day long here, be there at the end. Robert Presley, the Clorox 47, running in 16th spot. That car qualified by Mark Green in the top 10, but Presley had to start 43rd with the driver change. Trying to work his way up through and doing a job of it, Steve. Yeah, Mike, he's doing a great job, and it's also good medicine for Robert to be at the racetrack. His crew chief, Steve Plattenberger, told me this morning Robert had been, has been at his father's bedside 15 hours a day for the past eight days, and although he hated to leave his father, it did make him feel much better to be at the race car, at the racetrack. And as you said, Mike, his race car, he felt like Plattenberger, that Robert could track down packs from wherever he needed to on the racetrack. And, of course, I think we all know Robert's dad, Bob Presley, a very successful racer. This is exactly where he would want Robert right now, and that's here racing today. Leaders coming up on some lap traffic. This may, it won't thin the pack, but it may single file them for just a bit as they deal with traffic here going off into turn three. Everybody's mind their manner is pretty good right now. They're staying on the bottom, giving them the outside. They'll work through here single file. What these slow guys will try to do is jump into the back of this pack. If they can, get to draft and be the first car one lap down. Randy McDonald and Larry Hollenbeck leading that group of lap cars. And again, the drivers who stopped prior to the green flag having a race of their own now there. some 50 barely there back barely the there pack. outside and you heard the spotter outside. right there Dale Jr. was not outside. quite clear he's there. of Robbie you got Gordon, the help coming but he's got help and Robbie does outside you got all the help outside all clear too wide behind you too wide behind you Tell you what, he's getting help from a guy that don't have a lot of experience at super speedways, Paul Menard in that 33 car. But remember, you mentioned this gentleman a while ago. He's driving for Andy Petrie, who has always had good race cars at this place, whether it was Bush or in the Nextel Cup. Yeah, Bobby Hamilton won here in, uh, in Andy's car. Andy was one of the first ones I ever saw to run the really, really soft front springs at Daytona and Talladega. Jason Leffler has been a top five car most of the day. He's drifted back a spot or two, Steve. And Mike, there were two NASCAR officials down here in the pits. They have just left. One of the fuel cans was missing a seal. And that is a violation of the rule book. So there's been a lot of discussion as to whether or not they can use this fuel can on the next pit stop or the first pit stop that we'll see. And this is the seal where you would see the seal. So we'll check in with the team to see if, in fact, or see what NASCAR has said about the situation. And this is something NASCAR did this year in Nextel Cup and in Bush. The fuel cans, they actually have a template that they go through wow. prior to the race. And when it passes the template, all the dimensions and everything, it's a 12-gallon dump can. But like the fuel cells, it's by dimensions. When it meets those, those dimensions by the template, it gets a seal on it just like your fuel cell, Steve. And we had a lead change, too, guys. Larry Mack, I just checked with the guys here in the double zero pits, and they said the NASCAR officials have given them the okay to use it. The seal broke off, but they have been given clearance to use it. While we were there, Johnny Sauter briefly took the lead. Fourth race he's led this season, and the first time since Las Vegas that Sauter's been credited with leading a lap. He and Robbie Gordon battle side by side at Talladega. The Aaron's 312 on Fox is brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Bush, the proud sponsor of the NASCAR Bush Series. With Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers back live. Robbie Gordon leading. We've had six different lead changes, five different leaders. Uh, Robbie Gordon, 
Plans on running in the 24 Bush races this season. Strong car in the same car he had Jeff at Daytona. Yeah, very strong race car right now. And what's really impressive is the fact that not only has he been able to go up there and lead, as he puts a block right now on the 81 car of Dale Earnhardt Jr., he didn't want to give that lead up, but he's been able to push cars to the front, get them to the lead, and then go right back and make the pass to regain the lead. So he's got a really strong ride, as well as this guy here out front. And Jeff, Jason left right wide now, behind you. Uh, running second. He yes. was strong early on, but he also had a problem with earlier on when he went down in the corner right Let's there. Let's take a look at the uh, double zero the car. Side. Yeah. Notice all of a sudden his car kind of takes off up to the high. He almost gets in that new safer barrier right in the middle of the corner. We've had uh, just uh, one caution uh, so far as we see Dale Earnhardt Jr. You're getting a little bit of help right now from Joe Nemechek, and uh, all of a sudden you look and you see Martin Truex lined up behind Robbie Gordon. So Junior running second behind Robbie Gordon. Let's rejoin Mike, Larry, and Darrell. On the bottom for the lead, Robbie Gordon. He's already led 20 laps today, twice as many as anyone else, and he's trying to take it back to the lead, but that outside group is just as strong. Well, that's what I like about this aero package. You know, you can pass. And that's what we're seeing today is past. Remember the 2001 Daytona 500? We had more lead changes in the first 10 laps than it had in the last 10 races. Yeah, when they put this aero package on the cup cars back in 2000, I made the comment in 99, you needed to put cots in the grandstands. In 2000, you didn't need seats because no one ever sat down. This was a package I wish they'd have stayed with in cup and just tweaked it. If they'd have just kept tweaking on this package, this is the best... Daytona Talladega package they got. Moving into the top 10, David Stremme in the number 32 Dodge. Running within a second of the leader. That maroon car up in the outside lane. Fourth in the outside line is Stremme. Here's Jeannie. Hang around, DW. Tell me if you can relate to this. Talk about being on the hot seat. David Stremme says his keister is hot, 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 a.k.a. the push is torched. The buns are on fire. Pit stop, please. When he comes in, they're going to give him a heat shield. I'm not making this stuff up, but I'm sure he's really pleased that they're sharing all this information. Uh, that's actually the least of his worries. He's still complaining that he's loose in the draft. They plan on taking that track bar down. Welcome to your first Bush race at Talladega. What happens, Mike and Jeannie, is those seats are solid. And uh, the driver will sometimes dump a little look, a liquid down his back or on his lap. It just goes down in there. It's like sitting in a steam pot. The water just, it hangs in the bottom of the seat, and you start to literally cook like a lobster. So they might want to give him some STP or aloe or something. <laughs> of course, those exhaust pipes run right underneath him, but at a racetrack like this, where you are wide open throttle most of the time, it just builds a tremendous amount of heat in the exhaust system. That happens to you one time. The next time you say, hey, boys, did y'all put those green holes in the seat? Yeah. <laughs> saw a few of those lobsters uh, on top of some of the campers in the infield earlier. It's a hot day out there. It's about 86 degrees. Martin Truex. Getting a little racy there. Yep. And he kind of dives out there. He's looking for his teammate, I think. Yeah, he slid right up in front of his teammate slash car owner, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 81 car. Kenny Wallace in the 23. Looked like he wanted to fill that hole as well. But it looks like right now, for the most part around the racetrack, that bottom line is Come the one that continues to move. What to, continues to move is wherever Robbie Gordon is. He has got a strong horse right there today, boys. In each of the last two years here, we've only had seven lead changes in each of those races. We've already had eight today, validating this aerodynamic package. Now, Michael Waltrip expected to be a contender in this race, but he has now fallen to 20th position. He's points racing. Normally, Mike would be up there fighting for the lead with the best of it. I think he's points racing today, Matt. DW within 10 laps of Michael hitting pit road. His car was running very warm earlier, had gotten up over 230 to almost 240. He said he needs lots of adjustments. His car, very loose, expected to come in with both Dale Jr. and Martin Truex Jr. He wants track bar, air pressure, and tape off the grill. His crew chief, Jerry Baxter, wanted to go with a two-tire scenario. Mikey overruled. He wants four. And you know what? Every time I called in with that many changes, they said, pick one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Which one you need the worst? And yeah, I think it would be a smart move now that we're 44 laps into this run and, and no one has changed tires. This next pit stop, whether it's green or caution, you want to make sure you get four fresh tires on there now. That way near the end of the race, 117 laps, you'll get by with maybe just two tires. Deal making among crew chiefs going on. Looking for someone to pit with at the same time so you can get back out. Yellow flag, the yellow flag. 
yellow flag for that piece of debris. Second caution of the day. Now that was Brian Patty, Joe Nemechek's crew chief, and Tony Gibson, who's working with Dale Earnhardt Jr., that was them making a deal here because we're just a few laps away from having to make those green flag stops had it not been for this caution. Let's see what happens here, Larry. See if we can see where this comes from. Whoa. Somebody bump you know, crafting? It looks like a piece of, uh, like, almost like one of the strips. You know, Whoa. it's not one of the roof strips, is it? Or I wonder if it maybe is one of the strips off one of the rear spoilers. You know, it has that flange on it as well that's bolted on. The wicker bill. And then, of course, they got skirts down the right side, but that looks pretty substantial. But if it's off one of those rear spoilers or a roof strip, whoever it's off of, they will definitely have to put that back on. NASCAR will not let you race without it if it, indeed that's what it is. And I don't believe that's a part you normally keep spares for on pit road. I don't think so. No. To me, this caution, who it helps the most, is our group back there, Bobby Hamilton Jr., Casey Atwood, those guys, because they were really starting to lose touch. They were about a half lap down from our lead pack, so I think they're the guys that really are, are going to enjoy this caution. Yeah, they'll step it up a little bit this next run. Time to go. Hermie Sadler was the first car one lap down. He will get the free pass. Welcome back to Talladega. Second caution of the day. Debris off one of the race cars. Pit road not yet open. Hermie Sadler, uh, though, will get the free pass, but the car didn't sound good as it came around, and now it sounds like it's shut off. It sounded like the transmission was making a lot of noise and uh, rattling around, but he could just be out of fuel. And Derek Cope goes to the garage where Jeff Fuller has just returned from. That leaves Cope and Rick Markle, the two cars, off the racetrack. You know who else this was a huge break for? Johnny Benson. He had lost that pack back there that was a second pack. He was almost in jeopardy of going a lap down in the, uh, in the one car. And there you see the green flag. This means pit road will be open, and it will be a very busy place. Jeannie? Well, the 87 of Joe Nemechek, they say the car is running perfect, no changes, just four tires, scuffs for inquiring minds. And a reminder to take some water, Joe, one more thing, remember not to kill the vendors, Matt. Robbie Gordon slides to a stop as they go to work on the right side. No adjustments for the 55 car. They will definitely have to go for four, even if they wanted to, because he slid into his pit, Dick. Earnhardt Jr. in his pit right now, a minor adjustment to the chassis in the back end of that car. Right in front of him, his teammate, Martin Truex. And there goes Junior. The 55 is beating him out, and so has Truax. Dale Junior comes out third. Mike Bliss fourth. Nima check fifth. Johnny Sauter, Greg Biffle, Kenny Wallace, Clint Boyer, Jason Leffler, Mike Wallace, Ashton Lewis. That's the race off pit road. That 55 bunch is on it, Larry. Yes, they are. I'm telling you. When your car runs good, everything runs good. Hey, the group that really shined, though, was Mike Bliss in that 20 car. Those guys came in seventh. As we see Hermie Sadler getting a the push there, no two car, but they go out fourth, Mike Bliss in the 20. Hermie Sadler, the Zap Creations Pontiac, they get pushed back to the pits. Look how Fort Gordon, he was way out there. And you know what I like? We talked about pit road being 55 miles per hour. As we're seeing David streaming the 32 car, he's sitting down there like he's not running. Back Just talking about Robbie Gordon's pit spot, he's pitting back about nine or ten pits from the exit of pit road with that restrictor plate. He can maximize pit road speed leaving, and that may be another good advantage to where he's pitting here with the restrictor plate. Steve? Well, Mike, Mike Bliss talked about his race car as being just a little twitchy. He said he'd lost a little front grip. The only adjustment they made to that Chevrolet, a half a pound in the right front tire. Great stop for the 20 team. Larry, I don't know what the, they're really working feverishly on that five car as if there's something up there that is not just, can't just pull tape off, Matt. What is it? DW, they've cut about a three by six inch hole in the bottom part of the bumper grill area to try to get more air into the engine. They had that grill screen ready, hoping for a caution so they would have the opportunity to fix that to try to cool down that water temperature. Yeah, what they've done is they've opened up this bottom area down here that wasn't open before. That's going to put a lot more air into the radiator. Yeah, they've already pulled about all the tape. I see one little piece left at the top of the nose, but you don't get a lot of airflow right up at the very top of that opening. Kyle Busch just barely got out of the pitch. You see the pace truck in time to stay on the lead lap.
Lollipop. The Aaron's 312 on Fox is brought to you by Aaron's. Let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. Trouble for David Stremme. Ran out of gas, apparently. The car would not start, and his crew pushed it all the way down pit road. Got it barely running. The uh, official there in the lower right had the lollipop sign up, the stop sign up, because cars were coming by on the racetrack. He had to wait until they cleared, and it stalled again. I mean, these fellows pushed it a long way. And what he's spraying there into the cal induction is ether just trying to get it to crank. Now, Kyle Busch's car got a, a big opening and some screen on the nose to help cool it. For today's Craftsman Adjustment, let's go down to Jeff Hammond. Mike, when you come in on a pit stop, what you'd like to be able to do is reach up, pull the tape off the front nose of your grill so you can cool it down. Now, in the case of the five car, they've had to come in and cut a hole in the very bottom of the grill so they can force air back in and through this radiator cavity to try to cool his car down. They prefer to take the tape off, but in their case, they felt like they needed to go to the bottom to force more air into the bottom of that radiator to cool that engine before they blow it up. Kyle back on track, and he has stayed on the lead lap. Now, a number of teams, uh, drivers have teammates, and Dick Bergeron caught some team conversation. Yeah, it is good stuff. Dale Earnhardt Jr. talking to his teammate, Martin Truax. Earnhardt, under that caution flag, said, what are you doing out there, Martin? Martin paused for a moment and said, oh, just racing. Then they got talking about where they should be running, and they agreed that they should be running at the top of the racetrack. That's the fastest part of the racetrack. But before today's race, Earnhardt told me that the top has narrowed as a result of the safer barriers. They may have some trouble running up there. Earnhardt has told Truex, we've had fun, but do what you got to do to win the race. If you can, go win it. Robbie Gordon leads the restart. Martin Truex Jr., Dale Earnhardt, Mike Bliss. What do you say we give these folks 190 miles an hour worth of crank it up? Sounds good to me. In their manners. It's, it's a twister, it's a twister. <laughs> That's what we always have after a restart. These cars get bunched back up and the crew chief tells them we're just a little ways from halfway of this race. People start to step it up just a little bit. And you know what? Some of those guys that are going to run at the back, there's a couple of defectors already. <laughs> it never fails. The 37 car, David Green, he's up to 16th. He's not going to fall a half lap behind this time. Frank Biffle trying to push Robbie Gordon back to the front spot. There's a look at that pack. The defectors, as Darrell calls them, right up there in the lead pack. As Robbie Gordon holds them off. They're what? still together. They're just more closer to the eye of the storm. Watch that five car, man. He got some air to that baby now, and she is coming to the front. Look at Truex and Junior on the bottom. Junior Whoa. sends Truex off into the corner underneath Greg Biffle, who was the leader. Robbie Gordon's in the sucker hole. And let's mention, none of these lead changes count. Only the ones at the start-finish line. Otherwise, you'd have 100 or more. There'd be no way to count them all. Feels good to lead. I don't care if it's only on the back straightaway. That's all I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Business, business is getting ready to pick up, boys. Robbie Gordon has Mike Wallace alongside and youngest brother Kenny just in front in that yellow and orange 23. Now, Wallace is trying to return the early race favor to Greg Biffle and give him a little bump drafting help. 
It's like a football game. After you had a couple of hits, it don't feel that bad now. So I'm going to get on up there and mix it up. Can you, you hear what? me now? <laughs> That's a good run for Mike Wallace as we ride with his brother Kenny Wallace though here in the 23 car. But Mike, those guys qualified back in 27th. They probably had one of the best Fords back at Speed Weeks during Daytona in the Bush Series. And they're showing it here again today. Have a new sponsor on board with them, Edie's Ice Cream. This is one of the best ice, runs they've you, had. Did all you say ice cream? ice cream? Ice cream. Ice cream. The best for it at the moment is that one, the number 60 of Greg Biffle. And they are four wide right behind him, going off into the corner. Now that's why we put the out of bounds line in, was to keep people from going in that corner four wide and sometimes even trying it five wide. That's where we've had a big problem here at Daytona or here at Talladega and Daytona in the past. And this racetrack is plenty wide enough for four, even five wide. But what happens, these cars start moving around. One guy makes one mistake. That's how we end up with a big car pileup. Well, what usually happens is the left tires get down on the flat. And when it comes back up in the racetrack, you hit the guy beside you and call him a don't look now, I'm not sure Michael is points racing anymore in that 99 car. He's up there battling for the lead. Is there three wide for the lead right now? He heard what I said. You know, every time I tell, say something like he tries to make me look bad. Plus, I'm sure Jerry Baxter and those guys made that car a little better on that pit stop. I'm thinking you're right. I think everybody made their car better. But they have to. But it's the bottom lane that's been fastest for Martin Truex and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Of course, having everybody three wide behind you certainly helps. I mean, we have 29 cars within two seconds of each other right here. I just think whatever lane, it's just like it's been here for the last couple, three years, whatever lane that 8 or 81 is in, that's the fast lane. Robbie Gordon broke out to now run third. Mike Wallace is fourth right behind the leaders. And Johnny Sauter right with him and Mike Bliss. But, Darrell, you're right. Kyle Busch in that five car, remember, he had to start at the back of this pack because of making that pit stop to fix the cooling, and he's already up there in the 13th position. Yeah, I was watching, man. He was going left, right, down the middle. He's going wherever he wanted to. Now, Dale Jr. up high in that 81. Why did he abandon his teammate up front? Now, can Truex get back to the high groove and pick up Dale Jr.? I think he's going to leave. He's almost leaving the bottom open for Robbie Gordon right here. Don't know if that's a good idea or not. Don't think so. Bye, Martin. But you know what? The, the, the groove that he's running right there, all the races he's won here in the Bush Series, even with the other arrow package, he's always run a little bit up off the bottom. Kyle Busch with that taped up nose works fine in the draft. Truex did go up top. He did come back to pick up Dale Jr. Maybe, Darrell, it's just to see if they got out of line, can they get back to the front, going to school for later in the race. That'd be pretty smart for that rookie if, he th if he's thinking that way. Of course, Dale Jr. might be talking to him, too. Because Dale Sr. used to talk to him. I know that. Dick Bergman? Well, Jr. really wanted to run up a bit higher, and he talked to his teammate, Martin Truax, and suggested that they both go up there. But Truax could not understand the transmission. He asked his crew chief, what does he want me to do? And by the time they got the communication sorted out, Jr. was already upstairs, Truax was by himself, and that's what happened. Yeah, you only have about a half a second to make that decision. And see, that's the problem with trying to work with someone or work together. It, it, you end up jeopardizing both of you. Drive your own car, do your own thing. Maybe I'll run into you at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Did you mean to say run with you? Oh, I mean run with you at the end of the day. <laughs> The Aaron's 312 on Fox is brought to you by Old Spice Red Zone. Spice things up. By Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Get lost in a Reese's. By Yamaha. Nobody's more in tune with motorsports than Yamaha. And by Subway. Eat fresh. 57 laps to go here at Talladega Super Speedway. Live action with Robbie Gordon leading Mike Wallace, Kyle Busch. Jeff Hammond is all the way up to third. Yeah, they did some uh, quick work on that number five car. He had heating problems early on, and they've definitely got it fixed. He has come to the front in a hurry. We've already had a dozen lead changes in the last two years in this race. Had a combined total of 14 lead changes. Let's check back in on the uh, five with Matt Yoakum. Kyle Busch, his spotter, Chris Osborne, is navigating that five car to the front on the bottom in third. All he has said, gauges look great. The car, awesome. 
Chris. All right, thanks, Matt. Ron Hornaday is currently right behind him running fourth. Robbie Gordon, who's finished seventh or better in three of his last four races and has completed more than 99.6% of his laps run this season, still holding on to the lead. Definitely hang on to the lead right there, but I'm really impressed right now with Mike Wallace. And guys, he picked up a new sponsor today with Edie's Ice Cream, and he's looking pretty sweet and making it to the front right now. But Mike's a really good restricted plate racer. Several times he's had some really good runs at Daytona as well as here at Talladega, so he knows how to get it done here. Mike Wallace, of course, brother Kenny Wallace, who led a little bit, a little bit earlier in the race, and brothers of Rusty Wallace, who you'll see in action tomorrow coming off his big win last week. How about the pole sitter, the rookie boy? He is sticking right there with his teammate right now on the uh, line. We watch Michael Walt go outside the pole sitter in the dream machine. Uh, again, Michael is one of his veterans who knows how to get it done, but I'm still impressed with what Clint Boyer is doing. He's following instructions. Mike Dillon and Richard Childers, stay on that bottom, stay with your teammates. So you got the RCR and DEI thing uh, happening here, and Michael Waltrip currently running sixth and moving on up. He's the uh, leader in points in the Bush Series. So let's go back upstairs, rejoin Mike, Larry, and Darrell. Clint Boyer, you see there running in fifth, that orange number 21. On point, Robbie Gordon's 55, Darrell. Looks like the car to beat, but here it's so easy to get double teamed. It really is. I mean, it's just a matter of am I going to be here at the end of the day, but the thing I would tell anybody if they were driving my car, that yellow line is your best friend. Use it. They can go around, they can get up on the outside all day long. I don't care. Stay on the yellow line. Because if you're right there where Robbie Gordon, Mike Wallace is in the four car, they can't go under you. They can't go illegal. under you. So you just ride the yellow line. You know, Mike and Darrell, as we watch Kyle Busch right now, we're watching three wide with Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 81 car on the outside. But I mean, we were talking about Kyle Busch in the five car as he continues to lose a little more tape. But I still think he's okay because that was just tape that was sealing that frame they put around there. They put such a hole in the front of that car. He's back there in dirty air right now. I mean, he went from 30th to 3rd in nine laps. Now the challenge would be the fact that if he's leading, can he still lead with that big of a hole in the nose? Boy, that would change conventional wisdom, wouldn't it? Here's a look at that nose. And let's show you what it looked like before uh, that tape patch yeah, it's just, started uh, to come out. That's just, they put it around that screen wire they put up there. I don't think he's got a problem. Looks like they've attached that with some of those metal screws like we've seen some other teams do this year. Just a piece of tape. It'd be very distracting if you're back there behind him. <laughs> Wondering what that's good Whoa, is coming at that? me. Robbie Gordon is trying to become the fourth different driver to win a bush race at Talladega in a car he owns. Ernie Irvin did it in 92. Kenny Schrader in 94, Joe Nemechek in 98, and in 2000. Mike Bliss was fifth on the restart. He faded to 10th, and now he's climbing back up through to eighth place at the moment in his number 20, Steve. And Mike, he also got as high as third after that pit stop. He's a little concerned about water temperatures. His gauge read 250 degrees, so periodically he'll duck out of line, Mike, to help the front end of that car, and then the power plant cool down. Johnny Sauter alongside in the 27 as they fight for eighth place. We've just got a hot day with good old Alabama humidity, and I just think that has thrown these guys a curve, because how many cars have we heard that's running hot? Is that the it, Birmingham boy and you coming out? Oh, I'm used to that humidity. Yeah, and, and, and it's so annoying to have a car where you can't go where you want to because you got to keep an eye on the water on the water temperature. Well, Joe Nemechek almost got a little boot there from Dale Earnhardt Jr. as he slid up high. There it is, with about as much humidity, not far behind it. Robbie Gordon, after 65 laps, is our leader. We're just past halfway in the Aaron's 312 on Fox. Robbie Gordon continues to engineer a 190 mile an hour freight train around Talladega. Gordon has now led 43 laps. He's led four times as he holds off Mike Wallace's Ford, Kyle Busch, Ron Hornaday, pole sitter Clint Boyer, and outside front row starter Michael Waltrip. Obviously, they're trying to get up there to him, but a couple times he's fallen back. He's worked his way right back into the lead. That's a strong automobile today. Now, Larry, we've had two cautions uh, for debris and for a slow car, none due to contact. But the pit stops that have been made will probably not allow anybody to go to the distance. No, they were on pit road, most all of them at lap oh, 47. Oh. Nemechek again well, got a boot from Junior and almost Junior, lost it. Junior is wearing him out. He's yep. pushing him into turns, and I know he knows better. Oof. That'll take your breath. Oh, yeah, I'm sure Joe is saying the same thing. Hey, man. 
Well, I mean, we were talking earlier, that's like bump drafting in the corner, and that don't work. No, you can't do that. you got to be pretty much going in a straight line or else you're going to get a guy in trouble. Look at Mike Wallace jump up there on the outside, but I don't think that's going to work. So, Larry, <laughs> catch my breath there. Whoa. We were... It's getting, you know, it's all of a sudden it's gotten real. Is, is there something going on we don't know about? <laughs> yeah, they keep telling them the race is getting shorter to the end. I think what it is. And we were talking about the fact that we'll probably need one more pit stop. And we, we just saw a piece of, I think we may have saw debris come off of a car right there. But, yeah, these guys were on pit road about lap 47. They needed to go to about lap 62 to 67 to be able to make it to the end. There's Junior getting Nemechek. Way out of shape. Yeah, and I think that's probably if there's debris, it came from Nemechek, be my guess. Well, let's see from Dale Jr.'s onboard camera. Just gets into him off the corner here a little too hard. They are making time. They're headed to the front, but bam. Man. A little piece of body work there. I yeah. think that's the part that someone just ran over it. It's not there anymore. Mike Wallace got the lead in all that, and Michael Waltrip got the front spot on the inside row in the 99. Probably looks like he's pushing up a little bit in the middle of the corner, Larry. Can't keep it right down on that bottom, on that yellow line like he had been. Let's see where that piece of debris came from. Ooh, there she goes. We've got more oh. stuff flying around today. Is that again part of the patch on Kyle Busch's car? It was right in that area. It was it right sure, in that area of sure those cars. Like it. Yeah, it came from the first second or third row right there. Take great shots by our Fox cameraman, but at 190 miles an hour, it's hard to tell. And you know, as I watched Joe Nemechek in the 87 car and Greg Biffle in the 60, that back up there battling the top five or six, it wasn't but about four or five laps to go. They were just barely in the top 20 once again. That's the product of this aero package. You can go back, but you can come back to the front. And it's all a timing thing. You got to start thinking about way before the race gets down near the end, where am I going to be? when they put the white flag out. Clear, huh? Dale Jr. in the 81 has gone way to the top of the racetrack. That gives room for four wide racing. Here's Johnny Sauter. Oh, he had to get out of the throttle, Mike. He had to get out for, for uh, Johnny Sauter. Yeah, you can run four wide through the corner, but that's just a little bit narrow. And I think we know where the debris came from right there. Johnny Sauter, the 27 car, that right side side window is gone. And you, they're going to black flag him. They will not let him stay out there without that with the window being gone. There it is, right there. That's what we saw on the back stretch while ago. Couldn't really figure out where it came from. So Sauter will have to pit and have that replaced if he's going to continue. That's uh, That side glass is in there for safety reasons if the car gets sideways to prevent it from getting airborne. Here comes Robbie Gordon back to the top side, back for the lead. They shake him out of the lead, but it doesn't take him long to get right back up there. He has really got a fine car today. But it's the same car he had at Daytona that he ran in the top five all day long. You know, just going back to Johnny Sauter's dilemma, most of the major teams have a spare right side window in the pits, but if they don't, I guarantee you they're scrambling right now trying to find one. Sauter up in the high groove, unable to get down to the bottom of the racetrack to pit. Has we completed 75 laps, and Kyle Busch. We're about to find out if that car can run out front with that big gaping hole in the nose. I don't think it's gaping as bad as we think. That piece they put on there, just pretty nice repair job. You can see how much is just open a little bit right there in the center. They, they must have been planning on that problem. Hey, he got quite a shove by Mike Wallace in the four car. Michael Walsh put a 99 down the back stretch that time going into turn three. You don't want to get too big a lead there, Kyle. Those guys uh, do what they did to Kenny Wallace a while ago. Yeah, inhale you. <laughs> that's, a pretty, that's pretty impressive. He restarted back there in about 28th spot and uh, worked his way all the way through that traffic and into the lead. Here comes the uh, side window. A crewman had to run back to the garage area and get it kept in its protective case and it'll be ready for duty. They had it with them, it just wasn't in the pits. Thirty-eight laps to go in the Aaron's 312 at Talladega for NASCAR's Bush Series. Martin Truex Jr. leading Joe Nemechek by officially one-tenth of a second. Robbie Gordon, Greg Biffle, Kyle Busch led a bit ago, asking us to wonder who is the only driver who won their first Bush Series start. At Talladega, there are 10 of them making their first start today. Who did it? 
Isn't the answer to every question, Mark Martin? I, that would be my guess, but I, Larry, I already know the answer, so you I, I didn't see that in the book. Greg Sachs. Greg Sachs, yeah. 1996. Yeah. Hmm. Now just to update you on Johnny Sauter, he is almost two laps down. He's back on the racetrack, but I think they are black flagging him again. They don't like the way that window has to be in there a certain way. It has to be inset, and uh, you can't just stick it across the, the outer edge of it, so uh, he's going to have to be back to pit road. Yeah, there's enough air pressure differential between the side of the car and the cockpit that if you just tried to tape it in there, it would blow right back out and cause a safety problem. And this yeah. will be a big hit for Johnny because he did come into the race seventh in the Bush Series points. And we've uh, got us another leader up there. I don't think Nemechek's led all day, and he's leading the race right now. No, we're riding with Aston Lewis Jr., the 46 car here. As you see Kenny Wallace in the 23 go by him, but that car right in front of him, that's Steve Grissom in the 36 car. Now, even though Steve lives in the North Carolina area, this is his home racetrack. He's one of the only Alabama game that exists right now, his hometown in Gadsden, and he grew up racing just across the street for Talladega at the Talladega short track, the dirt track over there. Good run for Steve, though. Ricky Pearson looking after that car as the crew chief. Yep, former Bush Series champion. DCT, which stands for Dreams Come True. Number 36, white and blue. There's Grissom 17th on the uh, right of your screen. On the inside, behind the orange, 21 of pole sitter Clint Boyer. You know, I mentioned that car right behind him, Ashton Lewis Jr. in the 46 car. He has someone new helping him. We talked about Paul Andrews uh, now coming over to Casey Kane. James Entz, who was the crew chief for Johnny Benson on the 10 car in the Cup Series. He's helping this group out. Remember, James Entz almost won the Daytona 500 with Johnny Benson not that many years ago. Mike Wallace to the inside, pulling down on Joe Nemechek, our leader. The ninth time Nemechek has led a Bush race here at Talladega. Jeannie. Well, gentlemen, wasn't it just a handful of laps back that we were asking if anything was wrong with Nemechek? And there wasn't, quite honestly, he, the way they would explain it in the 87 pit, just the way the deck shuffled for them this time, and he got bounced back. It's Talladega. He has a great car. He came in at the pit stop, and they made no adjustments. Gave him four scuffs. Very pleased with the car. I guess Nemechek's biggest problem here today, he doesn't have any friends. Everybody knows how successful he has been here, so they can't find anybody to work with him to help get him up to the front and then maybe keep him up at the front. Robbie Gordon's got a friend. It's lean on me, brother. Here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr., and he leaned on Gordon's rear bumper all the way down the front there straightaway. There. Yeah, he Still leaned there. him right back into the lead. Dick Berger. We'll see how long that lasts, Mike, because Junior had to pull out of the tightness that he was running before because when he's right on another car's bumper for too many laps, the engine gets hot. So he had to back out. That put him a little bit back. The engine cooled down, and now he's getting aggressive One again and moving forward. And you saw that closing rate I was talking about. Dale Jr. caught. Robbie Gordon and just shot by him on the outside, and that's the burst of speed Clear. you get with this. Got one package. looking outside. Uh, Ron Hornaday. Hornaday. Well, they got a nose on your quarter panel. Outside, 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 he's back he's in there. the mix here. And that's outside. what happens again with this arrow package. You go to the back, and then you work your way back to the front. That's why some of the drivers complained about it, but it makes exciting racing. But when they completed the lap before this, when he came across the line in seventh, he led that lap. 20 lead changes today. The most in the Bush Series race here, 30 in 1994. Now, before this was the Bush Series, back in 1979, there were 40 lead changes here at Talladega. We may, we may have that many today if we uh, keep going like we are. A great competitive and so far safe race here at Talladega. One pit stop to come before we complete the 312 miles. And trouble on the right front. Donnie Neuenberger. Got some right front damage. Uh, I saw him Caution go by earlier. Out. Caution is out. So that'll pretty much put the pit strategy out of the equation because everyone certainly will be able to make it from this pit stop. I think the question will be, we may see some teams try just two right side tires since everybody changed four tires on that last pit stop. The free pass will go to Kim Crosby, number 51, one of two women drivers in the race, Tina Gordon is the other. That's the first car one lap down at the moment of caution. Well, which, which we get up here, stop out of the way. And Donnie Neuenberger has put us under caution for the third time today.
The Aaron's 312 on Fox is brought to you by Aaron's. Let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. Buy Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Buy DuPont car care products. And buy Taco Bell, where you can spice up the night. I think that should be, that's how we boogity. Boogity. But, you know, boogity. They didn't ask us. <laughs> Pit road is closed under this third caution caused by Donnie Neuenberger hitting the wall with the right front of his number 77. Ron Hornaday is our leader. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Joe Nemechek, Martin Truex, Robbie Gordon. As they'll come around and look for the final pit stop of the day. Dick Bergman. Junior just keyed his radio and told the crew, those gauges sure are funny. There was a pause in the action, and the crew said, what do you mean they look funny? He said, I ain't never seen gauges point that far down before. Running hot when he's running behind people, so they're going to tear a piece of tape off Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s nose, try to cool that car down so he can run up close to other people. And in the heat today, they've allowed each team an extra man over the wall to service the driver. These extra laps, this is just giving those crew chiefs a little more time to think about. Do I want to try two here, or do I want to do four and be safe? Well, crew chief, what do you want to do? I believe with no more laps than we've had, if I've got a good handling race car, I may try two. But those cars that's been loose, I don't think they can get by with two. They need to change four. I know what my driver wants. I'm not leaving until I get four, so you better make it quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here they come to pit road. Let's start with Jeannie. Well, Joe Nemechek's crew chief, Brian Patty, made his decision uh, minutes ago, guys, as soon as the caution came out, that they would indeed go with four tires. He's had a great car all day. He's called for a nice stop, nothing crazy, business as usual, and minimal fuel, and the four stickers, the brand new tires. Get yourself a good drink. Steve? Rod Hornaday in, Jeannie. They've talked about right side tires only, and that's it. Two tires. Matt, Steve, a four tire change. Expected for Robbie Gordon. No adjustments. Michael Walsh was talking about two. They're going four, Dick. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s regular Nextel Cup team is pitting this car today with the exception of the Jackman. Brian Chase replaces Kevin Pinnell. Four tires fueled. No changes whatever with the chassis. They got the tape off, but Casey Atwood got in front of Jr. as he was trying to get out, and that slowed his exit from the pits. Of the contenders, Ron Hornaday and Robbie Gordon, along with Martin Truex, got the best exit off pit road. Yeah, and the big deal there is the two car got two tires, Robbie got four tires. And what I do believe is David Green in the 37 and Robert Presley in the 47 still on lead lap. It appears, by the way, they came off pit road. They probably changed just two right side tires as well. I just don't, you know, with this aero package, I mean, you can pass. I'd get me four fresh tires. Collision on pit road. Mike Wallace, and here comes Casey Kane out. Tips into the back of Wallace. All it does is square up Kane, and he gets going. Meanwhile, a tire gets away from one crew. It's not my tire. Be hard finding some way to oh, yeah. claim it. They just leave it laying out there. Mike Harmon, I believe. And the hood's been up on Kenny Wallace's car. Dick Bergman. Well, the reason the hood has been up on Kenny Wallace's car, Mike, is that he has been overheating. In fact, the crew pulled a little uh, water exchanger toward the front of the pit road area so they could exchange some of the hot water in that radiator for some cool water. Wallace had been running up in the front until that thing started to overheat. He was forced to have to pick a line of his own way up high, drop back. Now they're just trying to save the engine. Things get hot, and it's going to get hotter when these cars get together and battle for the lead. Less than 30 laps to go, 29 cars on the lead lap at Talladega. The Aaron's 312 on Fox is brought to you by WebMD, redefining modern medicine, and by Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar. Eating good in the neighborhood, Applebee's. 28 laps to go. Under caution, Ron Hornaday Jr., your leader, and our Old Spice lap leaders up to the moment here. Robbie Gordon has led the most so far, followed by Hornaday. Martin Truex Jr. currently running third with Jeff Hammond. Chris Myers in the Hollywood Hotel. You got your Old Spice on? It's hot out I here. I surely do. Okay, you smell real nice. Uh, yeah. Your thoughts on Hornaday with the two-tire decision. you agree or not? No, I disagree with Ron Hornaday. I think right now, with this new era package, you want to have your car as stable as possible. So get you four tires. They're going to gang up on you, on you anyway. I'm looking for the 8, 81, and probably 87 to get hooked up and come to the back anyway. But that 55 car, I still think he's a car to beat. 
Now well, let's get uh, some thoughts from uh, Larry McReynolds. I think uh, uh, Dale, I should say Daryl agrees with you. I don't know if Larry does. Larry? Well, I'm seeing about six cars that's in the top ten right now that changed just two tires. Ron Hornaday did, David Green, Robert Presley, Paul Menard, Ashton Lewis, and Johnny Benson. All those guys elected to go with two tires. But when you look at a lot of those guys I named, they were back there running 20th to 25th. So they would they had nothing to lose just trying to get some track position. But I'm, I'm like Daryl. You can pass here now. Yeah. You know, you go back to the old rules, you couldn't pass. So the more I've thought about it, Daryl has convinced me that the fact that I believe four tires is the way to go. <laughs> well, hey, way to go, buddy. I'm convinced him. Because those guys with two, you'll be sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, D. Daryl, you're Robbie Gordon. You've got the fastest car from what we've seen so far today. You've got Martin Truex right behind you, but you're not up in the lead. What do you do on this restart? Well, one thing you don't want to have happen is to get, start getting passed and fall way back into the field because you run out of time to get. He can get back to the front, so it's going to be a timing thing. He needs to stay as close to the front as he can because we've shown time and time again he can get the lead, but he don't want to get too far deep in the field. All right, Matt Yoakum is down with Robbie Gordon's crew who have been the class of the field all day. Mike, big RCR horsepower under that hood, but a lot of horsepower here on pit road. Robbie Gordon's next tail cup pit crew guys servicing that Chevrolet. Let's give a call out to him. Ira Joe Hussey, Timmy Lattigan, Mike Moore, Larry Hartle. Kevin Nervania and Matt Cruda, these guys have done an excellent job today, flawless on pit road. And now Robbie just has to do the rest and put that car in victory lane, Steve. Well, Matt, with crew chief Butch Hilton, Butch, let's talk about your decision to change two tires on Ron Hornaday's car. Well, we've been a little bit free all day and uh, actually got pretty loose there that time. So maybe the two tires will help tighten us up a little bit and we can get a little track position here and see what happens. You know, we need to win a race and uh, sure like to do that for AC Delco. and. Uh, Maybe this will be our best chance. All right, good luck to you. Let's go to Chris Myers. All right, Ron Hornaday, 45 years old from Palmdale, California. He's the landlord to the stars. Kevin Harvick moved out to California. He rented to him, and then he did the same for Jimmy Johnson. So he certainly has been good to some drivers. This may be his moment. Robert Presley in the 47 car from Asheville, North Carolina, came back with his father ailing in the hospital, currently third here racing with a heavy heart. Yeah, definitely so. But I mean, Robert Presley, he is a racer. He knows what his father would wish, and his father would be saying, Robert, go down there, do your job. And if you're going to say anything that's not, you know, real profound, win this one for me, buddy. Go down and get one for me. And David Green, you talked about strategy throughout the day. The guys in the booth, hey, who can drop back? How far you can move up? David Green, an example of working the field. Yeah, these guys right there had strategy early on as far as falling back and trying to stay out of trouble along with Bobby Hamlin Jr. And we find these gentlemen have worked their way back up the front along with Robert Presley and got themselves in position to make a good run. Dale Earnhardt Jr. who has led, currently ninth. Let's check in on him with uh, Dick Berger. Dick? Well, Junior's a cool guy. This is the tape that had been on the grill just before that pit stop. They pulled it off. They're hoping this is all it's going to take to let his engine cool down so he can move forward with the race. Getting set to go here as part of a full weekend of racing that continues tomorrow, starting with NASCAR this morning on Fox Sports Net. The Aaron's 499 Nextel Cup race is on Fox, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, if you don't have a, a, a seat belt on your television, you better go get one real fast because it's fixing to get rough. NASCAR, all weekend across the Fox Networks. Ron Hornaday, the leader with two fresh tires, as has David Green, Robert Presley, Robbie Gordon with four tires, Martin Truex Jr., rookie Paul Menard, Ashton Lewis, Joe Nemechek, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Johnny Benson are the top ten as they come off turn four. And they're getting ready to look at the green flag, perhaps for the final time today. And we still have 29 cars on the lead lap with 26 laps to go. The last of those, Kim Crosby in the Boudreaux's butt pace, number 51, who just got the free pass. Green flag. Ron Hornaday drags him back to pit one. We have a few cars on the inside line that are cars are one or more laps down, but only about four or five of them. That outside line should move around them. Like I said, if I'm Robbie Gordon, I'm going to do everything I can to get into the lead right now, and I'm not going to I'm not going to give it up. He's been good out front all day long. He just needs somebody to help him get back up there. David Green loses number 37 to the outside, the Timberwolf Chevy. And Robert Presley looking for somewhere to go. Here comes Robbie Gordon underneath Robert. But Daryl, Robert Presley did exactly what you was talking about early. He gave the bottom up. Robbie Gordon, he's going to fill that hole. Yep. 
You got the you got the that yellow line is your best friend. Get on it. They heard you. <laughs> Problem is everybody wants on it. They can't all get down there at once. Through the trioval, back to the start finish line. Now Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 81 has caught his teammate Martin Truex. They're the first two cars on the outside. Let's see if, as they did before, they can bring that outside line back to the front. I believe when Junior holds his car wide open, he'll probably go to the front. Because I don't think he's held it wide open yet. Inside. Rookie Paul Menard comes Inside. into view on Inside. the left. Here are the RPMs of the car. They never change, even through the corner. That's a sign right there. He is wide open right now. With fresh tires on these cars, there will be a lot of maneuvering going on because they feel real good. They're sticking good. You can see the car's really dicing. And, Darrell, I think that's the key to those four tires versus two. It's not that it makes you faster. It's just you can maneuver your car. You can turn it to the bottom if you need to. And the difference was through the trioval. Hornaday, with only two fresh tires, really lost a lot of speed coming through the trioval, and the outside line just streamed by him. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's just no way. With ever, if everybody took two, you're okay. But when you take two and everybody else takes four, adios. What do you think, Spencer? <laughs> Jimmy Spencer's up here with us. He's, he's like I am. He's pacing back and forth. This makes you nervous, doesn't it, buddy? <laughs> Jimmy spent uh, much of the day next door in the NASCAR officials booth. He's got them straightened out over there now. They're going to know. They got, they, they got their marching orders. So he came over to work on us. Here's Robbie Gordon to the high side. Mike Wallace is with him as Gordon way up high. Now it's three wide, and Gordon has no help. <laughs> Meanwhile, Del Earnhardt Jr. is beating the rear bumper off the car he owns up there, that A car, Martin Truex. But I think, Daryl, Martin Truex, he needs to use that yellow line right now. Del Earnhardt Jr. has not a lot of help behind him, at least for now. Greg Biffle's bringing the group up there, but Martin Truex, he needs to hug that yellow line. What you got to watch out for when you're out front, like those two cars are, is that closing rate again I keep talking about. You're going to get chased down in a hurry by somebody, and it looks like it might be that five car. Yeah, a big lead is nice at every racetrack we go to except for here in Daytona. You're a set and done. But now that means the people behind you got to be smart, too, and work together. And right now, that doesn't look like it's happening. 21 laps to go when they get back to the strike. Lots of time. Now Kyle Busch in the five car, he's trying to form a group up there in the high side. Joe Nemechek behind him in the 87 car. They've got Jason Leffler in the double zero car right in front of them. And we got Mr. Bump Draft running third. I mean, he is all over the back of Dale Jr. The problem with that is, is he bumps into Dale Jr. Dale Jr. bumps into Truex, might get a chain reaction. I tell you, I just continue to be impressed with this run by Mike Wallace in that four car. Those guys, they did not qualify very well, qualified 27th, but they knew based on Daytona, same race car, they had a good race car. There you see Mike in the four car. He is in fifth place. Jason Leffler leads the outside group as he comes back up into the top five. It's still anybody's race here in Talladega. It'll be 17 laps to go and they come. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Around goes the 38, the 4, the 1, the 33. Look out, Pit Road. Look out, Pit Road. Look out, Pit Road. The 46, the 95, and Johnny the 12. Benson. You know, that's a place we've not normally seen the big wreck break out right in the middle of the trial. I believe with this package, that through the trioval, when people get under you, it just loosens you up just enough to get you sideways. Mike Bliss, Casey Kane climbs out of his car. He's okay. That's the car that ended up against the pit wall. Tim Fetowa's car still wrecked in the grass. At lap 100, 17 laps to go. Fetowa has put the window net down, so he'll be able to climb out. There's Ashton Lewis with damage to the rear. And the right front down, Dick Bergman. With Casey Kane just got out of his car, what was it like out there? It was fun all day. It was, uh, it was oh, I mean just it was now. Racing. It was great racing, but I don't know. I saw a couple cars hit, and I knew I was going to be involved in it. And it's too bad. We had, a, we had a good car. We just I got back there a little bit. I was trying to work my way back through, but uh, tough day. We're glad you're okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks, Casey. Car's done. 
That one along with Tim Fedewa and Mike Bliss. Those cars look like they're finished for the day. There's damage to the rear of the 46 of Ashton Lewis, among others. Let's see what happened here. Coming into the trioval to complete lap 100. Bottom of your screen. Like Mike Wallace got a little bit loose right there like you talked. Daryl and then came back up into the car that was on the outside of Yeah, he, he bounced off a of Biffle, and when he did, there was a car under him, and they got together, and then away they went. Of course, half the field's behind him here shortly after a restart. Boy, everybody jacked up from behind him. Tell you what, the trial here, I know people, you know, you just don't realize how you're going 190 mile an hour through a trial well, that's got 14 degrees of banking can suck you around in a hurry. This would be looking this this would be looking from like pit road. Casey Kane turned around. Typical Talladega wreck. Yeah. Two cars get together, 12, 13 cars end up being victim. Yeah, Benson slammed up into the wall and Bliss. Well watch that 38 car go all the way across pit lane and slam right into it right there. In real time, let's have another look. And in real time, that means at 190 plus miles per hour. That was right with Ashton Lewis. Looked like at one point he almost made it through the wreck. Man, those are hard licks. Into the safer barrier. And driving away. Jason Keller. He was one of the lucky ones. He made it through. Remember, Jason was one of the ones at the beginning of the race had the strategy of staying behind everybody to try to see if they could get out of the big wreck. Here are the cars involved in the wreck. Benson, Wallace, Fedewa, Bliss, Grissom, and Kane. There's Kane's car. Lewis Compton and David Keith. Now, more than half of those cars were able to drive away. I'm going to add Paul Menard to that list, the 33 who spun down to the grass off, uh, off of Benson. Now, watch the 38 of Kane. He's up against the outside wall just to show you how much speed they're carrying through here. Misses everybody. Comes to rest against the inside wall. From Dale Jr.'s pit. They see it unfold. That's why I always preach to my guys, no matter where you're at, never turn your back on that racetrack. Johnny Benson's car under repair. Dick Bergman. And what they're trying to do here, Mike, is just get this car fixed enough so that Benson can make one more lap. That would give him additional points over those cars which cannot make that additional lap. So if they can get this thing to run and just make a lap, it's going to be worth some championship points to Benson if that is the point of what they're doing. Yeah, and he just had moved in the top ten in points after the Nashville race a couple of weeks ago. He was in tenth. We'll be back to sort things out and get restarted. We still have 15 laps to go here in Talladega. Fourth caution of the day. It's for the big one in the trioval. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Welcome back to Talladega where Martin Truex Jr. is the leader. We are inside of 15 laps to go working the fourth caution of the day for a multi-car crash in the trial. Well, Jeannie? And standing by Mike Bliss, I guess for you it was just wrong place, wrong time. You're telling me you just saw smoke and then before you know it, you're standing here. Yeah, we, uh, you know, the Rockwell at Mason Chevrolet was good, just like everybody else. We could go to the front, go to the rear and go back to the front. But I was just kind of, you, you knew it was going to start getting hairy because it was time to go and we were starting to move up and, and I saw coming through the trial smoke and a car turned and I let off the gas and I got hit in the rear and you just, the whole race been pretty clean. We were all just kind of behaving, and then it was time to go. And uh, you, you kind of didn't expect it, but you just hoping it wouldn't happen. But it happened. Disappointing finish, but I'm glad to see you're doing okay. All right, thanks. 
Well, Jeannie, there was reason not to expect it. We've had several looks at the different replays trying to find the cause of this incident, Daryl. If you watch this car right down here at the bottom of the screen, this purple car, when we come through the tri-oval, you see these guys back here, one, two, three, wide already. Mike Wallace is starting to say, okay, I got this guy down here in my way, and, I'm get, and the, gap, the hole is closing. As this car comes up, Mike runs out of room, and he gets into the side of Biffle, bounces off of Biffle into the purple car, and that's what caused the wreck. That's Jimmy Kitchens, who was six, make that five laps down at the time, trying to hold the bottom of the racetrack down on the inside, which is where the lap cars are supposed to be, but not getting quite far enough to the inside. And what a mess. Interested spectator up here joining us in the booth after a trip next door with uh, the NASCAR folks is Jimmy Spencer. It's only fair. I got Larry and Jeff. They gang up on me all the time. I need a driver, <laughs> you buddy. An ally I got a driver, I'm here, buddy. DW. You know that. I, I've watched so many times. Hammond, he never lets you go. And this guy picks on you every time he can. Mike, well, you know the what? only guy. You try to keep peace. I know that. Well, you it's know what's easy. fun about picking on Hammond is normally you don't even know we're picking on him. So. <laughs> I won't go there. because Jimmy, it's, it's good to see you back. You ran the Daytona 500 and uh, sat at home, watched us on Fox for a few weeks, but now good. you're back in that four car. Yeah, you know, and, it, and you guys do a great job. I will say that sitting home watching it, but it is. It's good to be back with Morgan McClure. we got a pretty good car for tomorrow, you know, and uh, we don't have a sponsor yet. We're trying to find a sponsor, but uh, we didn't qualify quite as well as we wanted to. Top 25, which isn't too bad. The car's running really good in the draft. And uh, what a race today! I yeah. mean, incredible. This is this is. This, I like this Aero package. Now you've driven it more than I have, but this seemed to be the best package. I'd like to see this moved over to the Cup cars. What do you think, Daryl? You know, watching today, racing this morning and happy hour and stuff. A lot of guys are forcing the issue, forcing to cut each other off. Every one of us has to do what we have to do to try to stay ahead of somebody. And Jimmy, has this the trial oval, has this become the new danger spot here? Well, like Daryl and I were talking before, that is the worst part on this racetrack because the car gets real loose, Mike. The car gets real free. And like he said, he, Mike Wallace was just trying to give enough room. And I blame the 39 car. I mean, he should have been down. He's lapsed down. He should say, guys, race, race. And that's what caused that accident. That's, that's what marred this race. Luckily, nobody got hurt. We're going to still see a great finish. But all in all, I think this package, Daryl, is awesome. I, I think that too. NASCAR needs to look at this package for the cup side. I agree. All right, we're going to get back under the green flag in just a bit here. Let's go back down to uh, Chris and Jeff. All right, thanks. Jimmy Spencer starts 23rd tomorrow. You'll see it on Fox. He's won a dozen... Uh, Bush Series races in his career. And, and as D-Dub likes to say, oh, by the way, <laughs> I heard what you said. And Jimmy, I appreciate what you said. Yes, Jimmy said he knows you, so he won't pick on That's you. Right. All right, let's uh, take a look with about a dozen laps to go here. So we won't have a single file restart as we stand at the moment. Mark no. Truex, Jr., with his teammate, Dale Earnhardt, Jr., as we look at the board, currently fourth. Well, a little bit like we saw in that last restart, lap down cars could be a uh, factor as they go back to green this next time by. We've got to be mindful of that. Hopefully those lap down cars will get out of the way and let these leaders kind of finish it. But uh, during the course of that accident right there, I noticed something that Daryl said it's very hard to do was uh, Paul Menard. I mean, he cranked that car if he is dead left whenever that uh, yeah, accident the, cost came. And uh, we see right here, we see Brian Patty trying to cut a deal, looks like, with the 55 guys uh, as far as his finish is concerned. And they both know that they need to get hooked up if they want to win this race. Yeah, let's check in with Dick Bergman on the team of uh, Truex and Junior. Uh, yeah, they're back on the radio again, Chris. Just sort of going back and forth again. Junior said he's probably not going to show up for work on Monday because he's going to have to go get a new pair of eyeglasses. He's been squinting all day. Uh, Truax wanted to say thanks for inviting him along. He's had a really fun time today. But perhaps most important in all of that, Earnhardt Jr. told Truax, don't let anybody get by your quarter panel. If they get close to your panel, they can get a run on you. So just get out of the way. Don't let them do that. So there's the master teaching the freshman. All right, Dick, 26 cars will be on the lead lap when we go back to green. It'll be a double file restart as they go up in turn number three. Getting set for the restart this time. Here's our DuPont Car Care race summary. 21 lead changes among 11 drivers. That's official changes at the start-finish line. Four cautions, four 19 laps. We're about to settle this one. What they're talking about is side drafting. You get a side draft off of that car when you get alongside of it. And uh, I tell you, Dale Jr. And, and his dad were the first people that I ever heard talk about side drafting. I think front to rear, but not the side. Matt, what, what you got? Well, DW, down in the 55 pit, Robbie Gordon, third. He was third at Daytona. Brian Patty was down in the 55 pit talking to Bob Temple and the guys, and they had a long discussion and said, we will play if the 87 gets to us. 
Yeah, it's just so hard when you got this many cars up there battling Ready, for the lead to flag. make any deals. If you've only got four or five, maybe you can. Green flag. 11 to go. Tim Fedoa taken for a precautionary checkup to a local hospital. Everyone else treated and released. As Truex, Leffler, Gordon, Earnhardt Jr., and Kenny Wallace, the front five. Presley, the 47, up there trying the outside on Hornaday. Here come the leaders. See Kenny Wallace in the 23, Joe Nemechek in the 87. They were three wide off turn two. They had to go by the lap car, the white car, Tina Gordon in the 10. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. lost car a lot of ground to that front three as he had to, had to go around or over in turn one. Three wide behind you. But as we've seen all day, there are some cars that they time it all right. Clear, all clear. They're going to be at the front. That's going to be the 55, the 23, probably the 81 and the 8. But Darrell, you've mentioned this whole race, and I know Jimmy knows Carter better wall. as well you do. I think Martin's best friend, as we see Mike Carmen in 24 against the wall, we don't have caution yet. And but all over there on just think, four. Caution is out. Caution yeah, is out. And it, and it did fly right over the leader, Martin Truex. And I was going to talk about this car. This has Davy Allison's name on the side of it. They have the Davy Allison Memorial over at BIR tonight. Tonight. Some debris or something. Just come down pit road here. That's uh, Birmingham International Raceway. Right. About 45 minutes west of here. Johnny Benson out of the race. Steve is with him. And Mike, Johnny just got out of the car. A lot of damage to that race car. What happened, Johnny? I don't know. You tell me. I mean, it looked, something got wrecked on the tri over there and got spun out. And, you know, eventually it was going to happen. I was kind of hoping it didn't happen that late in the race. But uh, Mikasuki dodged us all. So we had a really bad overheating problem at the beginning. Got saved by the one caution. Car was good. We just running a little hot and just um, wrong place. Thanks, Johnny. Stacy Compton will be the first car one lap down. He'll get the free pass. Mike Harmon was a lead lap car. He was having the best day of his yeah. season so far before he got up into the wall. The quality plus service is Chevy. I think Mike lives right here near Alabama. Yeah. Well, he near actually Colorado. lives in Mooresville now, but his hometown is yep. here, Birmingham, right outside of Birmingham. Oh, you're from here, Torrington. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. I was raised there at BIR. All right. We're going to get this restarted. There's 10 laps to go right now. Fifth caution of the day, but they will restart this race. Our next restart will be a single file restart, a down finger, lead lap cars only to the front. Talking about BIR, we used to go there and race. When somebody get mad at you, they'd say, I'm going to put you in the hog barn. <laughs> <laughs> the hog barn was out the end of the first turn down there. It was oh. at the fairgrounds. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot different from being sent to the Oval Office. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But, Daryl, yeah. you raced there, pretty unique racetrack. Oh, if yeah. you could get around Birmingham, you could get around about anywhere. Donnie, Bobby, Neil, Red, all of them. That's where they all got their started. Smut Means, Alton Jones. And congratulations to Red Farmer. Red inducted, Farmer. Yeah. Inducted this weekend into the International Motorsports Hall of Fame, which for a short track dirt driver, dirt track driver, that's a heck of an accomplishment. 72 years old. I was over last night to the dirt track, watched him race Kenny Schrader and Tony Stewart. And the old rascal put a heck of a show on, led for the longest time to finish second. I think Tony beat him. But 72, Darrell, and still racing and looks good. No, he does. He, he doesn't act like he's 72. <laughs> no. I can tell you that. The thing about it, he looks the same today as he did about oh, yeah. 30 years ago when I was sitting in the grandstands at Birmingham. He's helped so many people, so yes. many people through his career. This is not BIR. This is the Talladega Short Track right across the street from the big super speedway where the World of Outlaws run tonight. I'll tell you one thing. Red Farmer never bought a new piece of sheet metal in his life. <laughs> <laughs> he had the most beat-up race cars I ever saw, but boy, would they run. But that number, F97. Yep. He was the leader of the Alabama gang. Along came Donnie and... Bobby Allison and later Bobby's protege Neil Bonnet and then when Davy Allison started driving Bobby uh, enlisted Red as Davy's mentor for the longest time. And of course not to bring up anything really bad but Red Farmer was in that helicopter yep. that day when Davy uh, crashed here at Talladega and of course Red did survive it. We're under caution for the fifth time as we are into the countdown laps less than 10 to go. Two Talladega Bush Series races have been settled by a last lap pass. In 1992, Ernie Irvin beat Dale Earnhardt on the last lap. And in 99, Terry Labonte passed Joe Nemechek on the final lap to win it. Dick Bergman. With uh, Bono Mannion and his guy is leading the race. That's Martin Truax as the laps wind down. What do you do from here? How do you keep that thundering herd behind you? That's a good question. Martin's been wondering the same thing. He said he needs an aspirin. He's been thinking so much after the race, but 
I think uh, this caution helps a little bit, but uh, it'll be probably four, five, six laps to go when we get back to green. Just try to get a good restart, stay out front. And those four, five, six laps are going to be the most interesting and important of the whole day, Mike. That's for sure. Truex, Jason Leffler in second. And don't, don't discount Leffler. Although Robbie Gordon seems to have had the strongest car here today, Leffler's been up and beaten around the top five most all afternoon. What's going to be interesting on the restart is it's going to take a lap to a lap and a half for sure just to get up to speed. So I think you're going to see some of the guys lay back a little bit on the restart. Hornaday, naturally, he won't. But I think they'll get, try to get that run, Daryl. You know that run off that turn two and use that back straightaway to get up the speed. And then I think it'll get real exciting through the trial. Over. But, Jimmy, that's where Mark Truex can't be snookered. Not a lot of experience at these speedways. He can't get a big lead on these guys. No, I think that Dale Jr.'s already told him about that. And that he's got a strong race car. It's going to be a heck of a finish. Tomorrow, the Aaron's 499 for the next Hill Cup Series right here at Talladega on Fox. And here we still have 26 cars that will restart on the lead lap. And all of them, the way things sort out here, have a chance to win it. I was just thinking about Neil Bonnet. And he turned over right here in this trial oval. Yeah, Remember driving, that? Driving for Richard. Driving Shoulders. for Richard in the, when he was trying to make a comeback. Yeah, driving the, the Bass Pro Shops 31. 31. It was. Yep. It was the first time Richard had used the 31 yeah. was uh, for Neil. They're going to call this a quickie yellow, which means that everybody can pit the first time by. Then they're going to give them one to go, and we're going to race to the checker, we hope. That's where we hopefully can have more yeah. green flag laps at the end. Safer barrier you see there uh, at the inside wall, just in front of the flag man who signifies that pit road is open. The other thing that the travel has in, is the safer barrier as well. They put it through the travel here. It just gives you an idea that to, if they know if they have trouble, it can be pretty serious through here. Well, will anybody stop? If, if it is, no. it's going to be cars back there that's uh, 24th, 23rd, 25th. Nobody at the front wheel. Chris Myers. Well, with eight to go, I, Jeff, we want to take a look back at it because one of the drivers said that, hey, everybody was uh, racing clean and behaving themselves, and then all of a sudden it's really more a case of uh, too many cars uh, going too fast in a small area. Let's uh, take a look at the wreck with 17 laps to go. Ten cars were involved. You were talking about Paul Menard in the 33 car, how well he handled the situation being caught up in all this. We see the 21 and the 60 kind of bouncing off one another, and all of a sudden Mike Wallace gets into the 60, but up across he can't flex the 12 car, 10 feet away, and all of a sudden you see the 33, he just cut it dead left and spun his car out across the infield, which basically saved him. If you'll notice, the one car, Johnny Benson, who's right behind him, is caught up in the accident, is now in the garage area. So, I mean, a great move by this rookie, Paul Menard, to save his race car. They'll put four tires on that bad boy, and they'll be able to continue. Tim Fito would take him to the hospital, as Mike Joy mentioned, for precautionary measures. Otherwise, uh, everybody checked out okay, and that's the most important thing when you have these spectacular crashes here, which we always expect, and we anticipate more of that tomorrow. Yeah, we surely do, and uh, safety, safety. We preach safety all the time as we look from inside of, uh, on top of, really, Jason Keller's car, another guy who was able to uh, miss this big one. And uh, I understand right now that the uh, 60 car, uh, Greg Biffle came to pit road, but, you know, he may have had some damage as far as he was bouncing off the 21 as well as the 4, so they may have come in to try to do some repairs to that car. And, you know, check out the, 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 the top uh, drivers here. Uh, nine, the top nine cars are all Chevrolets. They have dominated most of the day. Of course, uh, Biffle in a Ford, but Bobby Hamilton Jr. in a Ford currently running 10th. But uh, this has been Chevy's race. It definitely has been Chevy's race, and uh, it's going to really get hot and heavy as we get ready to have this race started. For Mark Truex, hmm, tough place for a young man like himself. Seven laps to go, uh, waiting for the, the quickie yellow. Let's rejoin Mike, Larry, and Daryl and Jimmy. A few new players in that group. Clint Boyer, the pole sitters, back up into the top ten in ninth. Jason Keller now up to 12th. He had his in-car view a moment ago. Robert Presley, 13th. Tony Raines, 14th. Casey Atwood, Tracy Hines. They're all lead lap cars along with... David Green, Mike Wallace, Steve Grissom, and Smith. Matt? Richard Childers told Clint Boyer on the radio, if you can get to the two, help push the two. They are talking about going to the outside. The 87 and the five were in on that conversation. Not sure if they're going to try to jump in and make that a four train on the outside to go to the front. Jimmy Spencer, where do you want to be on the last lap when you get the white flag? You want to be leading, second, third, inside, outside, where? Leading. I think you want to be leading this race and uh, on the bottom, like Daryl said, and it's going to be interesting. It is. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a little, it's going to be a little treacherous. It's going to be fun. Get ready. Here we go. This will be the most important restart of the day. Six laps to go. 
ready. 12 bush races here, 11 different winners. We only have two previous winners in the top 10. That's Dale Earnhardt Jr. as well as Joe Nemechek. Truex, Leffler, Gordon, Earnhardt Jr. get a little bit of a break from Kenny Wallace and the rest of the field. You know, Truex uh, left the bottom open earlier for the for uh, Robbie Gordon. He's almost leaving it open right there. Boy, you don't want to give those guys a chance to look under you. Robbie Gordon in the 55 wanted to move to the high side. I think you looked back and saw nobody was coming with him. Everybody's hugging that yellow line down the back stretch. Bunch of bottom oh, uh -oh. He opened it up. Yeah. Ellen Hart Jr. in 81 is going to take it as well as Kenny Wallace in the 23. He's out there. He's a sitting duck right now with no one to help him. And they're not anybody going to jump out there with him. Well, here comes Nemechek, but I think it's too little too late. Well, I think the reason Joe Nemechek felt comfortable doing it is there was a little bit of gap between him and the car behind him, but they're coming to five to go, boys. Well, it's got to be a lonely feeling. Jump up there on the outside and find nobody in your mirror. Now they're too wide again on the inside. Hornaday back and, and shuffled. Ken, uh, Herman out. Kenny Wallace, Kenny Wallace, 23. Herman. Herman. But that'll be a good sign for Whoa, Robbie Gordon. Gordon. He's going to go to the high side, make it three wide up there. Where he still has no help. Kenny had to get out of the gas. Gordon couldn't lift, so he had to swerve. Yeah, he didn't get out of the gas. He just made him another groove Look up there. Look how far back they are again. Yeah. Single file on the in the inside, staying in line, and them guys up there ba battling the way. Jason uh -oh. Leffler uh -oh. got, uh -oh. got him loose, got down. Uh -oh. Mark Truex loose, had to get out of the throttle. Dale Earnhardt Jr. took advantage of it. Well, him. he got down below the yellow line, too. Got a wheel down there. Not sure if it was avoidance. He could have been forced down there, and they said they were going to take a look at it. If you got forced down there, that they would make a decision. Now, Jason Leffler, who was just running second, he continues to lose spot. He's up there with no help. Time, four to go. And up front, the teammates are together. Truex and his mentor, Dale Earnhardt Jr., one, two. Watch the small gap behind you. You got about the same distance behind right him. Now, the next. top six is single file. You're not out of this thing, even if you're back in seventh, eighth, ninth place right now, until they get down to about two to go because you can close so quickly. Hornaday now third. Rookie Kyle Busch in the five is fourth. Rookie Clint Boyer is fifth. Hamilton Jr., the highest he's been all day in that Marines number 25. Sixth, David Green, Michael Walter, Jason Leffler, and Jason Keller, the top ten. Martin opens the bottom up just ever so slightly off the of turn two and four, but he's got his, got his car on the right behind him. I don't think he's probably going to pass him. I don't either, Darrell. I think the eight car is strong, though. If you watch him roll, they roll, roll through the center. Hornaday got, the, he got <laughs> Dale Jr. sideways. Robbie Gordon still works the outside, but now that's the long road home. It's back at 10th place. You got a hungry man in that two car right there. Rod Hornaday has not had the greatest season. His best finish is seventh back at Daytona. And remember, he's one of the only cars up here that has those two right side tires only. But he's driving the wheels off of it. He had he had eight there just a second ago. He had his four deal back. Two wide behind him. Michael starting to work an outside lane. Three cars back. I actually think that Hornaday's trying to figure out how to do this. He's lifted a little bit, if you noticed, at the end of the straightaway, trying to get a run. He, I don't know if he can do it on his own. I don't think he can. Well, he better figure it out soon. Two to go this time. The top four single file, they put about five car lengths back there to that group. That's three and four wide. Whoa, oh, oh, around goes Boyer off the bumper of Hamilton, who takes another car into the wall with him. Now, caution is out. The field is frozen with two to go. As long as they maintain caution speed up there, Martin Truex Jr. will be the winner of this race. The field is frozen right now at the point of caution. Bobby Hamilton Jr. got into the back of the car that went sideways and spinning. And here is Junior pushing Martin Truex. He may push him all the way to victory lane. <laughs> Martin thinks he's got a flat tire. <laughs> Dale Junior got him jacked up off the ground. But one thing for sure, the DEI organization, <laughs> they have an awesome, awesome super speedway program. Oh, you can't dope. take nothing away from them. We'll check on Clint Boyer. Bobby Hamilton Jr. and Tony Raines got right into the middle of that. He was having a, a top 12 run. When he got caught slow up. Slow it down, just slow it down. They can't like pass you. Boyer got away. He got away. He slid all the way down on the inside there, but he got away. The yeah. white and the yellow. White flag. The red flag rule was five to go. Which means that they would not restart the race. See, Hamilton got below the line, and as he came back up, he got into Boyer. And there's Reigns in the wall. 
Mike Wallace is still going to end up with a, a 12th place finish, it looks like, even after being involved in that first accident. Grissom's involved in that in the 36, and Tracy Hines in the 6. When I watch the 25 car, though, watch as we watch, watch it this. again, let's watch this. That's the red car, bottom of your screen. And three wide in front of him. This is through the trioval. Michael in the middle. He gets a run down underneath a Boyer. He's below the yellow line, oh. and that's the whole point of the yellow line is to keep us from doing that right there. I tell you, the saving grace on the 21 car, every time he goes backwards, just look, those roof flaps deploy. Yeah. Now watch 20, the first red car in line on the inside. There he goes. He could have used better judgment there. Yeah, that, I mean, there was, there was no room. Oh, and he took himself out in three or four more. Yep, he took Tony Raines, the car behind yeah, him in the wall. Awful. Tracy Hines sideways, the number six. Yeah, the ragu. And Steve Grissom. All the guys that you really pull for to have good finishes, yep. they get taken out on the last lap. Ride with Jay Keller. Ron Hornaday's crew. See, Hamilton Jr. turned sideways and up in the wall because when he lost his forward momentum after getting Boyer, he got hit by Nemechek. And, of course, even though it looks like Ron Hornaday will finish third, the crew's reaction was they wanted that lap and a half <laughs> shot at these guys. I think that uh, he was going to be uh, third I think place. The, out <laughs> the outcome was inevitable, wasn't it, Jimmy? <laughs> yeah, once Junior got himself back to, to Martin, I think that you're right, Daryl, that he's got his owner back there pushing. Oh, yeah. and it, it wasn't. You had to pass two cars, not one. That's Dale right. Jr. was not going to let that happen. Nope. And, uh, you know, hey, man, they built a heck of a team. Junior and Teresa have built a great Bush organization. Let's talk Second about the win. Truex family. As Martin Truex Jr. from Anne, New Jersey, gets the win. You've raced against that family for a lot of years up north. I've raced against his dad. I've never really raced against Martin. And uh, they're just great people. And, and Martin's a good guy, young kid. Got, and, you know, they spotted him at, uh, at, a, at a north race. He was running at Dover and stuff, and that's where it really started. And Barney, his father, just was running him in some limited races. And Junior saw him, liked it, and he says, I, I think I'll give this guy an opportunity. You know the irony about Martin Truex winning this race at Talladega? Remember, back at Daytona, Dale Earnhardt Jr. carried the eight number. They put the eight number on Martin Truex at Rockingham. They decided to leave it on here. The eight car goes to victory lane again at a restrictor plate race. Dick Bergman. I'm going to try to catch up with his crew chief, Bono Mannion. Bono, congratulations on a big, big day. How did a young rookie like this learn so much as to win here at Talladega right after the big win he had just a little bit earlier? Uh, just Dale Jr., I think, uh, teaching them. They, they race on the computer, and Martin's better than him on the computer, and he was better than him today. <laughs> and they were talking about that during the race, Mike Joy. They were talking about uh, Talladega BR, which is a computer game, and Junior and Truax were talking back and forth about how to play it, tires and all the rest. Yeah, on the, on the game, the BR is the initials for the guy who designs the program, and the tires wear out, so they have to go to the top side, and that's what... That was their inside lingo to get up top around Robbie earlier. Okay, so you want to be a big league winning racer? Go get a computer. Now look at the left side of Truex's car. Because it's got donuts all over it, but he didn't get that under the green flag. He got it under this final caution, and he got it from his teammate. <laughs> They're having a big old time. I guess you can't really fire the driver for he owns it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back in Talladega from his dad's fishing boat in New Jersey, Martin Truex Jr. Burning out big time. The winner here today, second career Bush Series win at his last four races and the first to win more than one race this season. Let's check in with Dick Berger. And a smiling, happy Dale Earnhardt Jr. I don't think we've ever seen you this happy to finish second. Why are you so happy? Well, I had a you know, great race car today. The Taco Bell Chevrolet ran great all day. Uh, Martin's car was awesome too. Um, just congratulations to Martin Bass Pro and the whole team. I, I own that car, you know, and I didn't. I was like, man, look. Uh, I told him, I said, if Martin puts himself in a bad position, I'm just gonna have to go around him. But if he if he does a good job, I'll help him all I can. And he did a great job. And when uh, I just kept hitting everybody, it was in between me and him, and they they jump up out of the way. And uh, sure, sure enough, I got this bumper and I pushed him as hard as I could. I had Hornaday behind me. Uh, he was pushing uh, and helping us a lot. And uh, just a great finish for. Uh, for a uh, chance to and a uh, great run for Richard Childress racing for third and a great job by you the fans loved it no doubt Steve what deck with Ron Hornaday jr. that was a wild one I'm curious as to what your game plan would have been if it had stayed green 
Uh, I've been doing it. I mean, we had Junior sideways across there. I didn't mean to. I thought we were just bump tagging him. He got sideways. And I think I could have got him, but he would have pushed me under the yellow line, and I, I couldn't do that. But uh, you know what? You look like a real car guy. Like a what? A real car guy. Oh, yeah, he's, he's Thanks, Ron. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Let's go to Janie. Well, Kyle Busch, this could have easily have been a disastrous day for you, really, finishing out in the top 25, and look where you stand right now. What was the difference here? I don't know. It's uh, these Lowe's guys. They did an awesome job today. And, you know, Briggs and Stratton on the side this week, we just have, definitely wanted to make a good showing for them. You know, we had a bad one about two weeks ago, but uh, had a lot of fun. We had to make some work on the grill there because we were overheating. We haven't figured that out. I don't think it's a grill technically anymore. No, not really. It wouldn't win the pole, that's for sure, but uh, we'll see what we can do here for Daytona. But uh, we got we got a whole car we can take back, and the Lowe's guys can do an awesome job and get it back together to see what we can do bent down there. All right, looking for respect and racking up the top tens. Matt? And Martin Truex Jr. for the first time in his career wins a restricted play race at Talladega. this win especially to beat the boss wow what can i say uh to beat dale earnhardt jr at talladega wow man i'll tell you what i couldn't have done without him he just pushed me at the end and this place is crazy i had a blast all day uh, just trying to learn do as much as i could but it's great just to be able to continue the dominance of chance two here and uh i told junior we busted his streak but he said no we didn't chance two still won so that's a pretty awesome deal. You kept telling me yesterday at the final practice, I just can't pass anybody with this car. Well, I couldn't. I'm telling you, they, Bono said that he had, he had it fixed up for him this morning. And uh, anytime he tells me that, I believe in him. And every time we, we have a bad happy hour or I have, you know, doubts about the car, he tells me we're going to be all right. Usually we're good. How special to win here. You kept saying the car, I can't believe <laughs> I've won at Talladega. It's incredible. First time I've ever been here. Bush Series, Dale Earnhardt Jr. pushed me to the finish. Uh, best pro shots on here <laughs> it's incredible i'll tell you i can't believe it <laughs> it's uh the biggest day of my race i thought bristol was cool bristol yeah. was cool talladega's even bigger his second win of the year guys truex led four times for 29 laps today ending up in victory lane 11 leaders swapped it back and forth 21 times you know as i look at martin i think about uh, maynard troyer and I think about Richie Evans and, and, and even you, Spence. I mean, from all you drivers from up north, you modified guys and you filtrated in down here and making yourself a little home. Well, I think, you know, Daryl, if you look over the last year, two years, even with Casey Kane, everybody, the, the, the door is open. If you can drive a race car, you can get the opportunity. You can prove yourself. You have to be in good equipment. Marmot was today, and he did a good job. And, guys, we came so close. We made it almost 100 laps of this 117 laps without the big one. But once one broke out, we couldn't stop them. I see a lot of guys that needed a good finish today that got them. Jason Leffler, Kenny Wallace, uh, Mike Wallace, David Green, all in the top 10 or 11. And Robbie Gordon ended up seventh despite having the best car through much of the early part of the race. Truex jumps to third in the standings. Jimmy Spencer, good luck tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Larry, Darrell, and I will see you tomorrow. We'll do it all over again for 500 miles, Chris. All right, thanks, guys. And checking uh, the points after eight of the 34 races of the Bush season, Michael Waltrip, still your leader. Robbie Gordon, a fifth in the points and had a good shot today, Joe. Yeah, but how about Martin Truex? He moves up to third, and he's going to be a contender for the rest of the season. You can believe that right now. He gets stronger each race, and with the coaching of Dale Earnhardt Jr., this team's going to be hard to beat. Yeah, coming into today's race, Dale Earnhardt Jr. had won the last five Bush Series races that he had competed in, including the last year's race here, but uh, he was happy as uh, Dale uh, helped push uh, his uh, car across with Martin Truex behind the wheel. What an advantage to have a guy like Junior kind of giving you advice. Well, I mean, uh, to me, I think it's almost like what Dale Junior got from his father a long time ago, and you can't learn from anybody better than Earnhardt when it comes to racing super speedways. Our full weekend of racing continues to, starting tomorrow morning. NASCAR this morning, John Roberts and the gang gets you going early. Now the world's best drivers on Fox at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific, that's noon here, Central Time. Aaron's 499 with Ricky Rudd on the pole in the pre-race show. We'll go 10 laps with Michael Waltrip. Rusty Wallace will uh, join us live. We'll spend some time with the fans in the infield, which ought to be uh, a lot of fun. 11 leaders today, that's the most of any Bush race this season. 21 lead changes, which is also the most. And Jeff Hammond, Dale Earnhardt Jr. again in the hunt. We expect him to be there. He's the favorite tomorrow, if not 
DEI, who would you give a good shot to? Right now, I've had to look at one of Richard Childress' cars, maybe like Kevin Harvick. You never know. For all of us here, I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow, 1 Eastern on Fox, for more NASCAR from Talladega.